It's really good. It feels good in my hand, even though it's too small. That's what she said. When you pick it up, it flops down like a friggin' noodle. I get that. I mean, he's probably just cold. <laughs> oh, that looks really uncanny. Oh my god. This is not my sound wave. Howdy, students of the School of Athenia, and welcome to the seventh Chocratic Seminar. I am the Dean of Critique, Runestone. Joining me, as always. First up, we have the Dean of the Arts, whose customs of both existing and original Transformers characters should frankly be official products. You got ID? We sure do. ID armed! <laughs> Hello, Rune. What's going on? Everything's going well, thanks. Uh, oh. Second is the Dean of Fabrication, who specializes in 3D printing, in particular, replacement parts. Watch out, GPS clear and PCV toys. He's coming for you. Everyone else. Thank you very much. Um, how are my fellow Chug haters this afternoon? <laughs> I don't see any. Well, I hope they're doing good. Last, but certainly not least, is the headmaster himself, Transformers Formula One and bird enthusiast, the man behind the made podcast, the man with a literal monkey's paw on his desk, Kit Catastrophe. All the time you have to leave the space. <laughs> <laughs> How's everyone doing? Welcome to the seventh Chug Craddock seminar. Oh, crazy. Oh my gosh, we're on number seven. Oh, it's... You better believe it. Seven months on the bounce. Wild. Hey, yeah, doing good. How are you all doing today? Um, less ill than I was uh, two weeks ago. My voice has finally returned to me. Um, I I can actually speak properly, unlike what you may have seen on the extra on on if you saw the extracurricular episode on uh, Rune's channel. Where I'm ah. struggling to get the words out, unfortunately. Uh, now I'll have to actually go back and listen to them for like the full context. Brinstone, why don't you uh, introduce our audience, uh, or at least the audience on this channel, um, to the concept of our extracurricular activities? Well, I've only done two so far, and both of them are currently on my channel. The idea is that um, these are non-live recordings, and... The two that I've done so far are basically on quote-unquote new toy reveals. I covered, in, in episode one, I covered Studio Series Blaster, um, the Star Raiders, uh, the Mayhem Attack Squad with Char. And uh, in episode two, I uh, expanded a bit more on the Star Raiders alongside that Target Optimus Prime with Bullseye. Um, what else was there? Oh, some of Legacy Wave 2. Cheetor, Beast War, Silverbolt, and Cybertron Starscream. I and then the Star Raiders again. Yeah, um, we expanded on details that were um, revealed in the 14th of March live stream. So yeah, um, these extracurriculars so far are only found on Brunestone's channel, but they don't... Um, necessarily have to be uh it's really just um any one of us who's wanting to host a uh a talk of some new products or other various topics we can just upload a new video on any of our channels and uh you'll get some extra chug craddock uh questioning <clears throat> you can find them you can find them in the uh, podcast playlist on uh, kit's channel yes Yes, I keep an archive of all of them. So, shall we get uh, introduced to the topic of this month's seminar? Yes, sir. Well, well, we've got we've got recent purchases to go through, I believe. Oh, do we? Yes, 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 we do. I'll 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 go first for this one. Although I think I speak for both ID and myself when I say that missing link convoy is simply. A masterpiece. Oh, out, oh, yeah. Of, oh, my a masterpiece. God. A masterpiece outside of masterpiece. I don't. But, uh, I, I don't have experience of the original Optimus Prime mold or any of its reissues. And after this, frankly, I don't care because 
This does almost everything I'd expect and more. It's it's well built, it's solid, the accessories are plentiful, the Matrix, Ion Blaster, Energon Axe, Roller, among others. If you bought if you bought C01 uh, based on the original Prime toy, a lot of the details that were stickers are now sculpted and painted to match. Also, also with C01, you get the trailer and nearly all of the play features that come with it, save for the roller launching gimmick. Um, but instead, you get the repair drone, which detaches and can roll on its own. There's no parts forming in the transformation. The fists completely store away in truck mode. The matrix chamber is removable, revealing seats for Diaclone figures. And the articulation is shocking. There are joints that I didn't think were physically possible to yeah. work with. Yeah, there were joints that I didn't think were physically possible to work in, given how the toy is structured. Ankle tilts, an albeit restricted waist swivel, and an ab crunch. The ab they, crunch work, they work in a friggin' ab crunch. The ab crunch, I, the, first I, I, the first time you do it, it feels like you're breaking the figure. Not in like you're actually breaking, it just feels like you're doing something that design should never be able to do, but no, it can do it. Yeah, and, uh, I, I, I could gush all day about this thing, but... I think I'll let um, ID take over, as I yeah. think you also have, uh, you have that, and you have C02 patterned after Prime cartoon color I scheme. I did buy the, quote-unquote, I think it's like the anime version, right? And, or like, being honest, adding on to what you said about how beautiful C01 Missing Link Convoy is, because, oh my god, like, uh, you know, I'm a paint guy, so like, to see every single thing picked out with paint instead of still being stickers... I think they still include with C01 to include the Aquifer stickers, but why would you use them? I don't know. But CO2, I originally bought it to use it for a custom, right? I, I was I'm still planning on it, right? But in hand, C02 looks a, a, like beautiful. It's a, such a beautiful deco. As far as I know, the red's the exact same. The chrome's still there. They just changed the blue and some to gray. And obviously, a lot of the paint on the face, it's not silver anymore. It's gray. But like, it has its own completely different vibe. And I so gorgeous honestly of course i'd prefer to recommend people the toy color version but that is like you know it's like 120 from sites like big bad toy store and whatnot honestly if someone wants to get a taste for the mold i just rec i'm gonna just recommend c02 because oh man it, it it won it won out like i don't know if i like it more but like i'm playing with it a lot more but that's probably because it doesn't have the trailer so i can just pick it up and play with it and whatnot and it matches with like I took a photo on it for my Twitter. Uh, he matches very nicely with the retro reissue Bumblebee that used the Encore. I believe, no, I don't think it was Encore. It was from the Transformers collection. It uses that Bumblebee head. So now it just matches up really well. And yeah, no, it's it's really good. It's really good. I'm kind of, on one hand, I'm in the same boat as you where I'm like, I don't need you on, I don't need a version of you on Optimus anymore, right? But uh, there is that upcoming... No picks yet, just a listing for a retro Optimus from Walmart or wherever you guys get it overseas, right? Uh, and I'm actually pretty interested in that because it has the trailer and everything, but it's going to be in cartoon colors, so I wouldn't mind. I wouldn't mind getting that actually, even though I have missing link. But I think Man, if I, I, think if I didn't now, already have two Optimus reissues, <laughs> if, that's if what I'm, I'm saying. Not... That's why I'm saying getting get get the anime version. Because that like gets you the same literal like nine point five out of ten figure with just without the trailer. That if you're not a trailer guy, would probably go in like a bin or storage. Which honestly, this is like the one trailer where I'm like, no, I'm gonna find a way to display it. No questions asked. Man, I ordered I ordered mine through Hasbro Pulse, so I'm not getting mine for another two months or so. And right now, I just feel like Squidward in that meme where he's looking <laughs> out his blinds, watching SpongeBob and Patrick run around in the yard. Yeah, no. And With listen, y'all are gushing how, about Missing Link Prime. That's how I felt. That's how I kind of felt because at TFCon, they were, they were everywhere. Everyone was everyone was buying them and stuff, bringing them for other people to mess with. And that's where it's I first a phenomenon. Them. Yeah, it's genuinely like this is like I think if you have the money and you're okay, not like if you're okay trying something new, like this is the Transformer toy to get. Not even just for a Transformer fan. Like if you have like an older family member or somebody in your life that was a fan of like G1 or collected back in the day, I say get them as like a gift or something for like Christmas or whatever, you know? Cause like, shoot, it's probably going to spark some like fond memories. And I think that's literally the point of missing like for like 
older fans. But for newer fans, it's genuinely just getting me more interested in buying old G1. And I'm talking like Diaclan era G1 because, my gosh, those figures have like – there's a reason everyone loves them. And like I already have a bunch of G1 figures, but like this solidified, oh, man, I do want a G1 Optimus now just because of how much I love this. From what, from what I understand or from what I've seen, the actual cab – figure the actual optimus prime figure the missing link convoy rather is actually a bit bigger than uh, the original optimus prime mold so it's not a one-to-one -one scale recreation of that that design oh it's not but like it's like almost there from what i can tell which is crazy yeah, I, I watched uh, sixo's comparison video i think and uh it's very very close well, as the one person in the room who has not ordered one or does not own one, uh, I can say uh, I'll just wait for a Japanese salary man to sell me one for 70% the price <laughs> in about three months. That's very fair. That's very, but like, I still think genuinely everyone that can get this should get this. Yeah, it, it is. It is, to use a word that Kit has been using quite a bit recently, sublime. Yes, and I and I await to see what a missing link has in store for us in the future. Oh yeah, especially phrase? since I I think the they, like they, they're hinting at something, and I'm like I'm ready for whatever. I will be pre-ordering like day one. Like, God, the scenes if they make a Megatron. I yeah no oh, oh yeah I mean it's not something that I picked up. It was from my from a friend of mine that picked it up. But uh, yeah, I got to handle G1 Megatron for the first time ever at TFCon in Los Angeles last weekend. Yeah, I'd buy it. I'd buy like one with like elbows and ankle tilt and stuff. One hundred. I mean, G One Megatron is insane. Like, I see the prices it goes for. I see it at like TF Nation, and it's like what two hundred pounds for one in the box, something like that. Yeah, my my friend. I don't know which version they got, but they picked up they picked up a version that was just the scope, but also had the sword and gun from the micro change figure. So I think it's a Takara version, but it just has no silent silencer stock. I'm just hoping a missing link Megatron does happen to have like all those things. And yeah, it's like it, it, deco with like red parts instead of blue and whatnot. I would I would I would be okay if they did um if they gave everyone the convoy treatment, be like, yeah. here's a toy version with all the accessories that the original had, and here's a cartoon version that only has what you really need. Yeah, it's it, I guess it just gets uh it gets kind of confusing when we get to characters that start having pretty different like heads and whatnot because you know convoy or optimus you know he skirts around it same thing with like megatron but like if they do a missing link bumblebee i wonder how they tackle the heads probably just like swappable faces or something i personally would be really interested in seeing missing link missing link car parts yes yes my my missing concern... link iron hide oh, oh my god, god. <laughs> My my concern is whether they'd be able to physically work in uh, modern points of articulation into certain designs. Yeah, that like is, those it, like those mini bots would be pretty difficult. Yeah, the, especially if some mini bots where like the whole the whole um, uh, structure of the toy basically relies on them having a mono leg. Can you, uh, imagine, can you for imagine a side gears point? with elbows? <laughs> I don't yeah. think it would be... I mean, I've never handled G1 gears, but like that doesn't seem like it'd be too He hard. doesn't really have arms. Yeah, it's That's... like the sides of the car are basically just... The, his arms are like flaps that come from the underside of the car. There's a name for them, but I forget what it is. I have to look at a picture of G1 gears now. I mean, I kind of see... It's the foot plate. The arms, are, the arms are basically just the underside of the foot plate. Yeah. I don't even think... So, like, missing, like, I don't think they need to do all the articulation someone, like, Convoy has. Like, I think something like Gears, you could literally just have some little swivel elbows or something. You don't need to have, like, full biceps and everything, you know? At least that's how I feel, personally. I would, I would, I would be satisfied with that as well. But it'd just be a challenge. Um, anyway, another purchase that I have actually made this week or this, this month is a new microphone so hopefully soon <laughs> i won't be sounding like i'm recording on a potato you know now that i'm sort of getting into this whole youtube thing and i'm kind of enjoying it um i felt i should have audio quality on par with the rest of you guys very nice i guess i'll uh go in a similar vein and talk about uh, some things that i bought that aren't transformers um recently i got a rubik's cube 
And I'm about like three quarters of the way to like knowing how to solve one from memory. So that's pretty cool. I still, and go ahead. I still don't know how Rubik's Cube. I hate to, I hate to say it's, that. I'm a 24 year old man, but like I don't know how a Rubik's Cube gets solved still. This, the, secret, the secret is just case recognition and rote memorization. Okay. Um, it, it, it's actually fairly simple once like you know what to do but um also i saw dune part one on hbo max oh, yeah. two nights ago and Very i nice. i fucking loved that movie okay. so um uh, last week my supervisor gave me a uh amazon gift card in a little care package that she put for uh she made one for all of us, uh, and I put mine towards a hardcover box set of the first Great Dune trilogy. Oh my! You're you're getting Dune pilled like that? I'm, oh my! God. I'm getting Dune pilled. Man, I Dune is fucking awesome. The movie, the the new movie. I fuck. I I shouldn't swear, but I just I absolutely adore the effects in that movie. The ornithopters, man. I was I'm oh, in love the with those. I'm in love with those. But um, I saw a copy of the um, edition of Dune that I bought on Amazon at a used bookstore. Um, and it's beautiful. It's huge. It's got bright blue edges on, the, on all the pages. It's beautiful. It has some beautiful cover art, too. Um, but yeah, I got, I got the first trilogy box set on Amazon, and I'm really looking forward to that. In terms of uh, Transformers... Uh, probably the one I'd like to talk about most is Studio Series Mohawk. Um, oh, yeah, right. He's out. Yeah, he's pretty cool. He's he's just a little core class dude. He's neat, and he has a knife, and you can take his head off. Was that yeah, like a thing know. in the movie? I, I never actually saw the last night. Yeah, his head got blown off, and he lived. Yeah, I don't know. Does he die? Does he not? Does no, he, he's alive. He's alive. He's just sort of perturbed when his head gets torn off. Oh, this ain't right. <laughs> sort of like Frenzy from 2007. Except, you know, Frenzy died. So, uh, it makes no sense, but like... Just well, he died water. later. He died later. He died, but not because his head got cut off. Oh, wait, he got, yeah. he got bisected, like, going vertically, right? I think? No. Yeah, he, his head he was... got, like, he, he, got, he got decapitated once at the beginning of the movie, and then he gets his whole body back, and then he gets, like... One of his chest blades re redirected back at him, and it like cuts his head in half. Yeah, that's, yeah. okay, okay, that makes that makes. And sense. he says, "Oh shit!" right before he dies. <laughs> oh man, maybe <laughs> is that what it said? Is that yeah, what that's it what he says. He says, yeah, "Oh I shit!" Oh, that, shit. I always that's... thought he says, "Oh, I see." Like no, <laughs> no, he just says, "Oh shit." See now, that's I... what I've always thought. Maybe <laughs> that's just my fucking child brain interpretation. The, su changed. the subtitle. I watch every movie with subtitles, and that's what they say. Now I'm starting to feel like I should have watched 07 at TFCon as like a warm up for this because I did expect an impromptu 07 discussion to happen. I watch <laughs> 07 after every TF Nation. It's, it's like an fun. itch. It's like a little maybe maybe mind. after maybe when uh, I show up to TFCon Toronto 2025, we can watch it. Yes, we can do a live react to 2007. 2007 watch party. Let's fucking go. Get <laughs> copyright strike by Paramount on whoever owns Paramount. I think so, Paramount just owned themselves. Oh, I guess. Least, I guess it's my turn for halls and oh Jesus, man. Yeah, everyone else oh. went. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure you guys have seen them. I'm sure you guys have seen the spoils of TFCon LA 2024, but just in case. Ivanko Petanko. Uh, it because of the the graciousness of all the people who like bought my customs and stuff, I did go a bit buck wild. I don't see myself going this crazy next LA. Actually, eh, if it's if I'm making just as many customs, we'll see, we'll see. But my uh, dude, this is this is moderate compared to my TF Nation halls, dude. <laughs> yeah, no, it's just like I wanted to go home with like a good grand ish, like, and I you know to just throw in my savings and then I spent the rest. So, but I mean for some highlights because I can't talk. I'm not going to talk about everything, right? Um, freaking ma the two ma MPs I got, uh, MP Optimus Primal and MP G Gets Away. Freaking great. Oh, it reminds me why I need to pick up more MPs. And if that a uh, rumored list of MPs that like was from earlier today, 
it's true. Oh man, I'm gonna definitely be a bit more invested in MP than I have been. For oh, I haven't seen that. MPs? Yeah, no, it was uh, it was in. I'll, I'll run the list. It's from someone reliable. I guess we'll talk. Bring it up real quick. It's just all rumors, you know. But like, I I must say, I would be way more into main mainstream MP if we got more figures like MP MP skids with the Diaclone aesthetic. Oh yeah, I mean that's what like burnouts for, and I mean kind of, re but like I think burnouts the one that goes the most into it, especially with the head, the new head. But yeah, uh, so I, like burnout and cross crosscut or whatever his name is. I don't know. Oh, crosscut looks they they're all good. I have reboost. I recommend all of them, and also they're dirt cheap MP. So like I have crosscut. I love. Oh, them. you have cro okay. So you know how good it is. Yeah, but I do. Yeah, I, would love to get. Like, I have reboost. Yeah. See, so I, I guess you know? that means I need to get burnout. Fuck. Please, <laughs> but so yeah, this like new rumor list from again someone who is apparently very reliable is like, uh, what cliff jumper, ramjet, jazz, lift ticket, big convoy, and then ricochet and night stick. And it's like, oh man, I, I see myself getting like half of those at least, which is which is crazy. So they got the Porsche license, they did. MPs probably slowly gonna become more and more of a thing I collect alongside like mainly chug and whatnot. So and masterpiece is just too far gone for me to really f feel any need to keep up with like there's just too much at this no, point and most of the stuff that i want is too expensive like what like for instance mp10 um uh, mp36 scour, um, scour manda by i saw someone get mp36 for like less than 200 i think off of by off of mercari japan which is like that's still a little out of my price range. Fair enough, not... but it's better than like whatever you're gonna find on like the U.S. second hand, second hand. Yeah, I, I get you. I get you. But yeah, so other, some other highlights, right? Um, New Age David, the start of a new addiction. Because oh my god, he's so good. <laughs> I don't know. If to, he's been he's become my official like desk toy. He's like just the slowly, perfect like, miniature. Option. Slowly, I will convert everyone here to the cult of Legends Three P. Oh, I just I don't know what to get next. There's it. It's kind of a thing I think you mentioned, Kit, where it's like when something is so broad, and there's just so much stuff to get into that it like it feels daunting. Yeah, it's, uh, I don't. I just don't know new age figure to pick next. I'm I'm probably eyeing their toy deco swoop because that was one I was eyeing before I picked up David last weekend. But we'll see what happens. We'll 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 see day by day. It's a lot Eventually. easier for me to get into stuff that's a lot easier that that I'm able to get into on the ground floor, like uh, Missing Link and Mechanical Skull Studio. No, that's true. It's not. It's not. It's just more like there's so much stuff to pick from. But I also yeah. don't want to go all in on New Age. You know what I mean? Like I'm not going to be picking everything up. So I'm I'm yeah, going to be fair. very picky about it. Just I picked Optimus because it's Optimus Prime. You know, like. Everyone's for, instance, for instance, I might I might end up uh, getting the other two Datsuns from Masterpiece, like Smokescreen and Prowl, just because I have Blue Streak and I love Blue Streak, That's and they're not that expensive. I need... One day I will convince Rune to buy a Iron Factory figure or something, and that will be <laughs> that will be the day. <laughs> um, anything else I picked up from TFCon worth noting? Uh has live the source. I finally picked mine up from a buddy who helped me get it uh, for the, for retail. Uh, it lives up to the hype. Genuinely, like I'd say for like the the full like I paid ended up paying like two hundred for it. Yeah, I'm 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 still coping and sneeding about it because I was dead broke during the backing period. I mean, I was. I was I'm, please do not make my FOMO worse. I just. I just paid for Haslab Omega Prime. I did yeah, too. speaking of, <laughs> we all just bought Haslab Omega Prime. Oh, man. I'm excited. I'm like, I'll be honest. I waited until the very last day to back it because, like, I was having feelings of, like, ah, I should probably, like, I just came home from TFCon. I should save up some money. I'll just wait for it to hit the aftermarket. Then I'm like, it's going to be cheaper to do it now than it will ever be in the future. So I was like, all right, F it. I have the money. I backed it. Says the guy who got Death Source for retail like a year later. That's true. <laughs> but I'm, I'm really excited to get it. But oh my gosh, this is about to be a year and a half wait, which I guess for a package that's going to have two like genuine commanders. Yeah, I guess it's going to take a while to produce some. I, I'm I don't really know looking I... forward to it. But yeah. I'm also, I'm one of my collecting goals this year is to get a vintage Omega Prime as well. Oh, okay. Vintage I... Omega Prime is very cool. As it, I, have said, I don't think it'll be, be that hard to really 
like find in the condition that I want. It's just a matter of uh, it's going to be like about a hundred something per figure. If... It's going to be easier to find it with the wheels, uh, with the tires uh, screwed up. But yeah. hopefully, if if my project go, goes to plan, that won't be a problem for very long. Yay. I'm just. If it doesn't, I'm gonna yeah. I'm gonna hold you responsible. It's been like three or four years since I got the Fire Convoy or Optimus at this point, but like I still can't believe I got each of them for like sixty bucks. The only thing is, my Optimus has the cracked wheels and is missing its missiles, and then Magnus is pretty yellowed. So I would love to find a better condition one at some point. But like, yeah, I'm not getting rid of the old ones. Uh, yeah. That I mean, now I have. I have one set of them that I can display as Omega Prime. The other ones can be their robots. And I think no, yeah, there's, nothing, there's this... nothing wrong with owning both. In yeah, fact, no, I, I encourage it. I've said this before, but the two figures, in my opinion, offered o occupy different spaces in the collection because, quite frankly, Omega the the new Haslab Omega Prime proportionately proportion wise the the combined mode is way better than the original, and I say that with as much love for the original in my heart as humanly possible. Oh yeah. I'm just uh, I'm just excited for it. Also, because I don't know. I'll be real, guys. I think I probably mentioned it last month, but Blue Bolts is actually what sold me on it. Just because, like, I don't know. This is how you do like new original things. I feel like, well, this is how you take you know existing things and make them new and exciting by just adding more to it without like changing the kind of whole design philosophy of the figure or whatnot. No, I, I totally agree. I totally agree. <laughs> Um, if this is how I, I think this is a great way for Hasbro to implement new playability into figures, I would love to and... see more. Like, I mean, this is what we've been doing since Siege, but I would love to see more inanimate objects just get robot modes. <laughs> but like, Blue Bolts feels different because it's not like it's not something that was part of like a Titan, it was not like a building, it, it wasn't it was even a name. It was, it was just, just Omega. It was just. It was just Ultra Magnus's gun. So like, just just keep doing it. I, I like where it's going, you know. <laughs> All right, we're about uh, half an hour into this stream. Uh, yeah. Do y'all think it's time to actually get into the Wait. main topic of today's episode? One last thing before we start. Um, All right. Did anyone else see uh, Six O bringing up my idea? Yes. Yes. Is this, uh, About, the broadside. Um, broadside. Yeah. Oh my god. I am not. I am not claiming. I'm not claiming to have influenced Sixo, but I'm also I'm also not claiming to have not done so either. <laughs> oh, I'm not gonna lie. After after what's what I've been seeing with Sandstorm, who I'm still excited for, but just not as much because of the size and stuff. I I don't want that for Broadside. Just give me the give me the stupid big Haslab. Make him make him like something worth paying full price for. You know. Yeah, let freaking Combiner Wars Silverbolt perch on him. Genuinely, awesome. make it to scale. <laughs> Make it to scale. With oh, it'd be bigger than Unicron. Risk. Listen. All right. Uh, Rune, would you like to um, just basically go over what the idea of today's episode is? Yes. Uh, this is something that I've been pushing for for a bit. Uh, I guess we'll see how it turns out. So across the franchise's 40-year history, there are Transformers toys that are divisive amongst the fandom. And then there are those that are near universally acclaimed or panned this seminar is us going against the grain we think to do this each of us has picked a toy we feel fits into these four categories overrated underrated overhated underhated totally not a dr seuss title we're not going <laughs> we're not going in the same order for each one by the way like we've done with previous podcasts we start with overrated toys we don't necessarily feel are bad per se, but perhaps they don't quite deserve all the love they've been getting. ID, I think you're up first. All right. <clears throat> this might be an actually heated one. <laughs> but <laughs> so basically, I've been, I was thinking about it a lot last night because last night was when I submitted my stuff just because I've been busy with, what, with like IRL stuff and whatnot, right? I was thinking like, what's something that would probably get someone to want to kill me, right? Or beat me with hammers. And I think Cybertron Downshift, I don't, it's the one that popped in. So I give my reasoning. I like I'd Downshift. Like to know something. Yes, you go first. That person is me. Oh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Let, hear me out. Hear me out, right? So Downshift is a figure I actually enjoy, like a fair bit, right? Nice, a beautiful car mode, like genuinely one of the nicest car modes I've ever seen, right? A pretty fun robot mode. 
and there's some so-so gimmicks in my mind. Honestly, they don't spark too much excitement for me, but that's kind of the reason I put him as my overrated figure because in a line with, like, all sorts of wild – just talking about deluxes, right? You have a pretty wide, like, range of deluxes that do all kinds of new stuff. It's weird how often I hear Downshift come up as, like, one of the shining examples. It's totally fair for people to think he's, like, a great deluxe, but to me – He's just kind of more middle of the road in like a good way. But like when you got figures like with more inventive alt modes like Dirt Boss and Brimstone, those are ones I always think more when I think Transformers, Cybertron, Deluxes, right? Or even ones who do unconventional alt modes like Thunder Blast. And you don't, you know, don't get me started on like Sideways, but I think Sideways is more regarded as like one of the greatest Deluxes from Unicron Trilogy. So I think he's out of the equation. Tell it's me just about the, it. <laughs> it's just the. Interesting how often I hear people bring up how great Downshift is. And again, it's fine, fine to think he's great. It's just to me, I think there's better deluxes that aren't the best of the line to talk about more when it comes to like what deluxes best represents Cybertron and how great of a toy line it was. I've, ha I've had experience with this mold too, uh, but not as Downshift. You may remember that this was redecoed for the 2007 movie toy line as, of all characters, Big Daddy. Yeah. The no, Micromaster. They, they, they love doing their random repaints in the 07 toy line because it made too much money. <laughs> uh, I, I really love the micro. I really love those like Micromaster repaints people oh, in yeah. the early 2000s. Those are some of my favorite toys, but um, I mean, I, I get where you're coming from. The toy definitely has its issues. Um, a missing head swivel is the biggest one I can think of. At least that's um, still easy to mod from what I've seen. I haven't attempted it myself. I'm very squeamish about modding more than I am painting, right? But mm -hmm. uh, I think that would help kind of uh, make him feel a bit better. Like, just the head swivel would help. But for me... Uh, this toy, for me, I really like this toy because it, 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 there are just some things I really uh, like about it because it appeals to my personal sensibilities. Like, I really like the grounded alt mode. It it looks, it doesn't look like a super futuristic car. It just looks like a cool car that you might see on the street. Um, and if the, alt, the robot mode, when not mistransformed, uh, is just you know, a nice basic guy, you know? It's just it's definitely no showstopper, but I do very much I do like the toy. Yeah, at the again, that's why I don't want to like harp on the figure, because again I like him. It's just at most he feels like crowd filler on a on a, like a dedicated Cybertron or Autobot shell. Which again, even fair, like, that is my jam. I love that crowd is fair. filler. That's it's just even something like I, the one other, if I remember correctly, the only other Earth mode deluxe I own, or Earth Earth Planet Autobot I own from Cybertron is Red Alert. And even then, I feel like Red Alert, his shape and his all the stuff he can do definitely evokes a more like, wow, kind of reaction compared to Cybertron Downshift, which is more like a neat to me, you know? Downshift's, Downshift's alt mode is very alternators-ish. And alternators were still out at the time. Oh, yeah. No, it was funny you say that because like, I saw someone, a friend of mine, get uh, Vinyl Tech Grimlock. And now I'm seeing this and I'm like, yeah, no, that is like, again, that is absurdly realistic looking. Even by like modern standards where you have like slimes like Studio Series and the movies and whatnot. Like, Actually, now that I look at it, you know what I'm surprised by? Yeah. Hmm. I'm surprised nobody has ever, has ever customized this toy into a 07 Bumblebee. Really? Yeah, because like, it's got the same because the Junker Bumblebee. Look at the alt mode; it's it's very close to Junker Bumblebee. Uh, Nineteen seventy-seven Camaro Bumblebee. Oh wow! Okay, I kind of shoot. I see it in the grill now that I'm like staring at it. Like just looking up some pictures of the seventy-seven Camaro. Mainly, mainly it's in the grill, but I'm just. I don't know. Just an idea. Fair enough. Again, this was uh, under Hayato Sakamoto's proposal for like a bunch of different e-hobby toy lines. The, the one that won out was Transformers Cloud. There was the one called Transformers Part 1. He proposed that like this figure would have been repainted to Wheeljack. I wonder if in those colors I'd like the mold a lot more than I do already as Downshift. 
but we he never got has it. the right shapes on his shins for the for wheeljack's stripes i mean look at that, that is, that's something i've noticed if you actually look at his feet they are almost in the same sh shape as like the front of the lancia car if you guys actually have not seen it let me actually drop the pic of this like whole proposal thing or like just like this piece of like key art he used for showing it off so uh, amongst a bunch of other like crazy figures that would have been repainted to g1 characters oh like, i've seen this image before that oh that is a great image this would have been such a great line of just being real oh, megatron out of movie wreckage w was a goaded idea yeah especially now that i have wreckage I, again i got him at tf kind of it's like oh my god that, that mold has no right to hold up as well as it does like almost i need the bludgeon years. repaint i recommend it i also messed with it but yeah no so that's really it uh that's just how, kind of mm -hmm. how i feel about downshift i like them but just i think there's way better deluxes in cybertron to give a to give a round of applause to yeah this this figure looks just more like a generic deluxe than anything else and that's fine and that's fine but yeah. Uh, at the same time, though, I don't really hear anyone singing this guy's praises that much. You, um, that's, that's a good... I just feel like that's probably... I, that's what it felt like when I was getting back into Transformers. I saw, like, what we're talking, like, six, seven years ago, so... Uh, Things have I changed, see. but, get, like, getting back into it, you know, this was a Cybertron figure I heard people, like, go over to move for. Not as much today, so you got me there, but... At the same time, I don't really even see Cybertron toys get that much discussion, except for when they get toys in Legacy. But that's like fair enough because it's the new thing. But uh, maybe, maybe Cyber. I, I hate to say, I don't want to say Cybertron is getting like underrated with newer fans and whatnot. But like, I, it's a it's a line I wish more people would like give a second look at, especially again newer fans. But it's an I mean, old line. What are you gonna do? I mean, in my mind, Cybertron is like one of the greatest Transformers toy lines of all time. Oh yeah. Energon, Cybertron, that was the goaded era of Transformers. Movie one as well. Mm -hmm. uh, on the basis, uh, yeah, movie one. Can't believe they had molds from like all three parts show up in, in like those later waves when they needed things. That's crazy. <laughs> but yeah, I think that's all I have to say about Downshift, my overrated pick. All right. Um, in that case, I think I'm up next. And my overrated pick is Haslab Victory Saber. Um, it's not that I hate the figure so much. It's just that I remember when he came out, everyone, everyone was gushing about it, and I couldn't help but feel disappointed. Uh, he's cool. He's very, very cool. He does everything you want a Star Saber to do. His um, stand is really cool. He does all the modes. But, I don't know, he just feels bad, you know? I wouldn't... So, I'll, I, I'm i very fond of Star Saber and Victory Leo, uh, just because they they were figures I grew up with. KOs of figures. I, I had KOs of the Robot Masters growing up, right? So, <laughs> I know them fondly, right? Even though I've, I haven't really watched much Victory, right? And, of course, I'm in kind of the same boat. I wouldn't go as far to call them bad per se i know you don't mean them like, i i wouldn't I, I wouldn't say like the toys are bad it's just that they feel bad in my hands they especially i know you don't have you don't have the source yet or if when right hit uh i i honestly don't think i'll ever end up getting it just ju just because so, i think it's unrealistic that's fair but, like, I feel like you'll feel this feeling when Omega Prime comes out, if it's as good as it looks on picks to like, in terms of, like, Hampton. Yeah, I, I hear Death Saurus is a lot better than Victory yeah, Saber. It's... The really, is... everything everything wrong with Victory Saber I have just comes down to the build quality. It doesn't no, it, feel it, premium. It doesn't... Midland? Right? Is that a word you'd use to describe? It feels like... Could you it repeat that? Like regular... It feels like regular Chug, except, you know, I paid a fair bit more for it, you know? Yeah, it, it honestly feels a little worse than regular Chug. Because, like, especially those locking panels on the inside of his lower legs, they barely lock in in either position. So you're, you just get really wibbly legs. Yeah, those yeah are... Alec, Te Alec Tech in the chat. Also, the QC issues are just yes, ridiculous. No, they were... I, don't, they were... I didn't really have much... Uh, 
QC issues, but like there is a hair under uh, Star Saber's chrome. Oh, uh, that's kind of <laughs> gross. I feel like I feel like if if that was their day one, you should have just asked for a replacement. I would have done it personally, but like I didn't yeah. think it was a big enough problem. Fair enough, but like me personally, I wouldn't have tolerated it. But like again, I like the figures. I still mess with them. I don't plan on selling them, even if a uh, new Victory Saber or Star Saber Victory Lewis set comes out like tomorrow. You know, it's like it's a hard thing to like sell it off. It's just more like. Again, it's it's mainly a retrospective thing now that we have Death Source and Victor and uh, Fire Convoy got Magnus on the way, right? Yeah. But like between stuff like why does Victory like stuff like why does Victory Leo have hollow thighs and guns? Uh, why does he have unpaintable plastic wings that need to be used with stickers? Why is Saber's face or the Brain of Courage's face like clear plastic that feels really scary to flip the, when it comes to flipping the face up? Why no individual fingers for Star Saber? I, know, I feel like that one's maybe a bit too far, but like, you know, like, I feel like a point, like, you know, if like Kingdom Rodimus can have, you know, the whole MP style hands, I think Victory Saber could have as well. And also have done the whole Jeff Fire thing with, with the thing. And then most importantly, what the heck happened with the shoulders for Star Saber? Yeah. <laughs> it's. Like I like like you said, I don't plan on selling mine anytime soon either. But it's definitely not off the table. Yeah, I like I'll I cherish the figure. I'm I'm happy it exists and stuff. But not gonna lie, I would have wait. I would have liked for them to have taken like a second pass at it because like again, the shoulders are something that I don't get bugged a lot by like toy making decisions because I gotta assume there's always all kinds of like behind the scenes stuff for like build quality and whatnot. But like. How are you not able to like just put a little flap that swings up and then the arm can go out like 90 degrees instead of the oddly limited like not even 45? It's yeah, it's baffling. And like, you know, I'm not a toy designer at all. I again I just paint them, right? Yeah, but like but you, it's it shouldn't be hard to just put a little thing thing. The, cr the crux of why I put this in the overrated category is that for the amount of money that I spent and for the amount of praise he got. He had proportionally the most disappointment attached to him. Yeah. I would like to say, as someone who bought the MP figure before the Haslab was even a twinkle in Hasbro's eye, <laughs> uh, lol, Lamau. Do you feel vindicated right now, Char? <laughs> yes, I'm. I'm glad I. I'm glad I decided I already have a Star Saber. I don't need yeah. another one. I will say I, I. I do give Hasbro credit for, or like the the designers on from both Hasbro and Takara for like getting their act together for Death Source and Fire Convoy cuz they definitely feel like chug plus quality which is what I was really hoping with these but unfortunately they kind of missed the ball on that and even though I like them you you know you got to I just have to admit it they're they're you know. I will I will say though um I'm I'm annoyed that this one sucked because people's disappointment with this figure is part of the reason I didn't pull the trigger on Haslab Death Thor Death Death Saurus. Uh, and now I'm regretting that. But, eh. Oh, well. Yeah. Yeah, well, I, I'm surprised. I, I have so many critical things to say about Victory Saber. Hopefully one day we have the chance to talk about it again. Because We should do know, a collab I, review. I would not say no to that. Even though I don't do reviews <laughs> anymore. I'd, just, to, just to air my thoughts out more. Because, wow, I'm surprised I have things to say like that. Ideon wants to balance his chug karma. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think we've exhausted our Haslab talk, and next up would be Runestone. Yeah, um, I just I just want to say for the record that I don't have this, so I can't really comment on it. I have no real attachment to um, Star Saber and Victory Leo as characters or as designs. I mean, as cool as they look, um, I just wasn't really interested. But you know what I can talk about? My pick for overrated. That being Universe. Oh man. Universe 2008 Cyclonus with Nightstick. I mean, I had several picks in mind for overrated, including uh, the classic Seeker Mold and Studio Series Blackout. But in the end, I went with uh, this guy. And this isn't just Kingdom Cyclonus topping this one. 
because even before that, I felt the hype for this toy wasn't wholly earned. And it's mainly due to jet, the Jetmo stability, or lack thereof. The arms connect to the body via a tab each that isn't particularly strong. Plus, the fuselage, is, well, the body of the jet is very gappy, if viewed from above or the back. And at the time, sorry, I mean, at the time, I think people were praising the leg transformation, where instead of telescoping, the halves hinge out and snap together, even though... The way I see it, this contributes to the gap problem. Also, it's a nitpick, but he, he can only handhold his target master in one hand. That being said, um, the figure, I think, still has a lot going for it. Cyclonus's inherent design is cool. The way that entire nose cone collapses into the body for the transformation, that I will defend. The articulation is decent for the time. And despite that more show-accurate redecos of this mold came out after, the darker purple of the Universe version still looks sweet to me. Also, the inclusion of the Target Master Nightstick, a pleasant surprise for everyone, I'd say. This Cyclonus actually has the, the Japanese Target Master gimmick where you can fold up either hand and the gun connects at the wrist, something that a lot of modern Target Master updates cannot do. Hi, Legacy Point Blank. I was so just about the, to. I was just about to say this toy completely mogs point blank. So you know, I mean, th 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 there's plenty to like here, but if I recall, a lot of people went nuts over this set, shouting "Toy of the Year" and all that. Uh, I think TG Omega put this at number seven in his top ten Transformers toys of the decade. <laughs> but, but I don't know. I, I just oh. feel even back then there were better figures, including in Universe. Uh, Deluxe Hound with Ravage, for instance. Still, I think we can at least agree on one thing, that being that Cyclonus is light years ahead of his psycho-crazy boss from that same line. <laughs> I just have two things to say about this toy. Uh, first, I think the gap issues are um, actually a reference to Chapter 12 of the uh, famous story and his armada, Love Across the Universe, Can You Recall It?, in which uh, Galvatron uh, rips half of and his armada's alternate mode um, in twain, and <laughs> and as far as the target master goes, in my experience, I haven't really gotten the whole plugging into the into the hand stump to really work in either configuration. A, I, I I think I might still have my copy around. I'm not going to go run down and grab it, but it's it feels pretty tenuous, which honestly, if I remember correctly, so I'm kind of with you on it. Yeah, the geometry just doesn't really work 100%. It's a neat yeah. idea, and it's and it honestly sucks that it hasn't come back in some form, because no, it was I would love to see it on Modern Target Masters. But... It was going to come back with Point Blank, but... Oh, the budget. The budget. We got budgeted. <laughs> I, it's not even a joke. Please. You know, understand the budget. It's no, I won't understand the bloody budget. It ruined the figure. <laughs> no, it, it sucks because, again, it's a thing where it's like we can't even speculate because Mark himself on his Instagram posted, like, the the notes showing, yeah, delete this. Literally, like, delete this plastic. That would have, like, given him an actual action feature. And it's like, oh, man. But you can't even joke about it. You can't even speculate. It's like, there it is. But There's no reason why we couldn't have gotten it on, like, no, genuine nose. No, you know, the double target masters get a pass, but like someone like Point Blank, who in his main media appearance does the thing, I think he should be able to do the thing, even if it's not. <clears throat> well, no, it's not even like a spring loaded thing or anything. And like you just literally move a part, plug it in, that's it. That he does the thing he's supposed to do, you know? Yeah. But back to Cyclonus, I think he's all right. Maybe it's because I live... I don't know if I bought him... I have a copy, like I said. I don't know if it's because I live in a post-Kingdom world or not, but I get why people liked him back then, but now he does feel a bit limited. But I feel like you can say about nearly every Universal Week Deluxe, except for someone like Hound. The amount of people I see who still keep their Hound as like their definitive generation's Hound is insane. Even though... You know, now we have the we have United Hound, who's like it was a it was a figure that that's been on my wish list for a long time. I just never got around to get. I'm uh, still, Hound. 
I'm still looking to get one to probably go with like BNR Optimus and stuff as like a. I don't want to say more realistic, but like just I feel like you pop nice with BNR. And I will say, like um, I do still prefer the Cyclonus's proportions to Kingdom. I just like how lanky and smooth he is compared That's to the true. honestly kind of dumpy Kingdom version. Yeah, and like you can't even chalk it up to being G1 accurate because G1 Cyclonus's cartoon model, he's a pretty. He's a pretty like lean, well built, well built guy, and then Kingdom. Very live. I think, <laughs> I think Kingdom's, you know, just because of like how the jet mode is looks and stuff. But no, that's so. I don't think they could have gone around fixing most of it. But I still think your stance is totally fair. But I will say, like getting a target master that well built, as in like you know nightstick, was like. I can't imagine being like a kid in, or like a young adult in 2008 who like maybe had the original Target Master like Clonus. Seeing that, is, like, oh my god! Like, does he got like elbows and arms? I think he's got knees. No, separate I mean, legs. Yeah, it's like again. He, no offense to Legacy Peacemaker, but this guy's running circles around him. <laughs> he's it's Literally, still he's honestly. Had, he's it's, he's it's still running. honestly the best Target Master mold we've gotten ever. Oh, um. I'd say the legends. I mean, his elbows. I'd say the legends headmasters give him a fair run for his money, but Nightstick is probably more accessible still. So, also the, legend, the, the legends target masters are somewhat stilted. Kind of. I, but to, to be fair, I, I still honestly prefer Nightstick to the legends target masters because I prefer. Like, I don't want a whole lot of articulation in Target Master. And what articulation I do have, I want it to be very solid as well. Because I hate the feeling of a fiddly Target Master. That honestly know. just ruins the entire point of a Target Master, I think. So I, I, don't like, I don't like Target Masters with lots of ball joints and stuff like that. I just want, like, nice rigid pin joints and stuff. And yeah. this one has that in spades. Literally, like, he's got, like... He's got like six or seven cap pins. It's crazy. He is like he's not breaking on anyone. It's again, frankly insane. Even again, even compared to like solo release battle masters. Again, this guy is. I think in terms of like the fun factor, running circles around him, and also presentation because he looks better than most battle masters unless you paint them yourselves. But why are you going to paint a battle master? I say this as I've painted a good number <laughs> of battle masters. At any rate, I think we're missing the forest for the trees, so we should probably refocus on Cyclonus himself. Oh yeah, right. <laughs> I, I have this figure. Um, he is the and his armada of my collection, as I own the kingdom figure. It's armada. Um. <laughs> uh, you he... know, if I ever get if I ever get reveal the shield, I'll probably make him and his armada too. So. Yeah, I have the I have the I have the reveal the shield figure as well. That's, that's the version I have that came with Rodimus. Um, it's 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 a neat toy. When I had it as a kid, or when I, I I didn't think it was amazing, but I I I do like the leg like, transformation. It's neat. It's not something you see very often. The closest thing I can think of is Cybertron Red Alert. It seems like the way the that the shoulders fun. swivel around the torso is honestly a go-to transformation step even though it hinders his waist i mean i feel like i feel like um it's a neat it's an interesting concept but i think um i think kingdom just did it better i think kingdom just found a better solution to that problem i i will say like going back to the whole overrated thing right i think there are more fun deluxes in Universal Eight, so I'm kind of with I'm kind of with Rune on this one, especially uh Mister Mister Sunstreaker Sideswipe mold. That is a fun mold, in my opinion. Ironically, that's my least favorite mold from Universe. Really? Yeah, um, and it's mostly just because of the feet. My Sunstreaker does not stand up very well. <laughs> Those are some pretty tiny feet. Oh my gosh! And they're very loose. I, I I should probably get some floor polish on those. What 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 else came out? And now I'm just quickly taking a quick like, look through universe. There was I forgot how small the toy line universe was. Oh my gosh! And now I think we're missing the trees for the forest. Okay, yeah, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> 
So, yeah, Universe Cycle. I don't know. Is there anything else anyone else has to say about him? Because I'm done. I don't really have anything to say. No. In that case, uh, Shar, you're the last person to go for an overrated toy. What's your pick? Uh, my pick is ROTF Bludgeon. Oh my god, really, man? <laughs> yes, uh, I know. Ironic, considering it's what I've been spending so much time on. But I have a reason, and it's the I like the concept of this toy. I like I love the idea behind it. But it's just ri it just the execution is not there. The execution is not there on this figure. Um, there are just there are so many oversights in the design, in my opinion. Could you could you elaborate? I, I I need to hear you out. I need to hear. I need to give you a fair shot. Well, it's just the way the figure goes together, uh, and the way it transforms means that a lot of the uh, a lot of the articulation is stunted. Um, like the torso, the torso has no articulation, and you'd think for a swordsman character, you would want that. Um, you also have the problem with the hands, of course, where the way the hands are designed and the way the sword is designed, you have to stress the plastic. You have to stress the plastic to get the sword in and out of the hands. There's no way around it. And I was a victim of this because my figure's fingers broke, which led to me having to, of course, three D print a new one. Was this a is this a problem just with the stock of Katana and Kanto, or was this like? Because for context, this, my bludgeon is I have the head robots upgrade kit, which have the new head and the new swords. This is I've a problem with the stock. Yet. Oh, it's just the stock ones. Stock because ones. it's made because the way obviously you can see the front of the the sword uh, becomes the end of the tank barrel, and of course you can see the muzzle break at the end. Uh, means that you can't slide the sword in and out of the hand. You have to push it. Uh, and it's made of rubberized plastic um, so that it flexes. And so, you know, you can push it in and it flexes. And, uh, and that works, but it means, the long it means that in the long term, you're risking breaking the fi fingers every time you try and uh, play with it. Oh, man. I, I actually genuinely did not know that. Like, of course, the one everyone talks about is the... Uh... The treads, which I, again, that's not an issue that happens for me. Maybe it's because I live in a colder state here in the U.S., which means like the you know the melting treads things isn't a problem like in general. But like, it's I'm not sure it's people. I'm not sure it's to do with heat as much as the uh, rubber that the treads are made of or the rubberized plastic degrades chemically. Um, I'd have to look into that. I think uh, um, Demolishor was also reported to have this problem, and I live in hot as fuck, humid as fuck, Louisiana, and my demolisher hasn't melted either. I think the problem is also boils down to, like, if you're putting your, if you put your figures in, like, a tub or a pile where, like, they're gonna have contact with, like, painted parts or, because I've, I've heard this is a problem with Beachcomber, new legacy, relatively new legacy Beachcomber with his rubber wheels. Um, if you put those on something that has paint, it might actually rip the paint off. That's also like what happens with blast oh. effects that go on paint wops. I don't know. I feel like okay. I'm going... now that now that you mention it, there are some funky colors on my demolisher's treads. But at the same time, I don't know where they came from. I I don't see any scarring on any of my other figures that it might come from. Maybe um, it just didn't take all the paint. I I like rubber treads. I love rubber treads actually. Like when they make sense. Uh, as long as they don't like mess up my thing, my other figures, you know. Does anyone like know how well uh, Combiner Wars Megatron's holding up? I do not own that figure, so I cannot say. I gotta assume it's fairly like it, I assume that goes for a lot more safety testing or just testing for like solidity on the basis that like those were actual working treads, right? I don't own any version of that. Mold. They, were, they were, yes. were working, so I have to assume they're tested to be more uh, long lasting. So, you know, you don't end up with, like, treads that rip apart and whatnot. At least that's I must say, part. 2009 was, like, the year for rubber treads. We got Bludgeon, Demolisher, and Rampage all in one line. Oh, yeah, right. Deluxe, Deluxe Rampage, right? Is that what yeah. I'm Yes. Yes. Deluxe Rampage. I have that figure. It's an interesting yep. figure. Um, you have to stretch the treads to transform him. At least in my experience. Yeah. 
Yeah, they they you have to stretch them pretty tight. Um, Very one of one of the most difficult transformations in my collection. I never really get it right. But so, uh, back to the subject. This yeah, fit, I, I, am, I am by no means saying Bludgeon is a bad figure. I am simply saying it's a really cool figure in concept. Of course it is. It's Bludgeon, but um, in execution it has some ser it, it has some serious issues. No, I I have to admit as much as I like the figure, there there are some flaw like this is a minor one, but like the weapon storage, not the mech tech weapon storage because that is badass, right? I'm talking like the actual weapon storage with the sheaths kind of sucks because again at least with the head robots parts, uh, it doesn't really like to hold them. I, I, again, I don't know if it's a thing with the stock versions or not, but I wish there was a way for him to class better. But also, yeah, he does kind of just stand there, doesn't he? You can't really pose him too much, and I know posing wasn't the purpose of, like, older toys from, like, the movies and whatnot, but, again, I brought up Wreckage earlier, and oh, like, funny enough, he got Redecking and Bludgeon. Like, that figure proved you could do, like, everything a modern figure does, but, like, almost two decades earlier, so I kind of feel like Bludgeon feels a bit brickish for not having those, you know? Um, uh, also, for Alex Tech, uh, Bludgeon doesn't have a Mech Tech weapon, but the, um, it's a Mech Alive, uh, is what, um, oh, is what IDM okay. is referring to. Yes, I know. Uh, I remember these Hasbro marketing terms from ten years ago. <laughs> um, Minor spelling mistake. Um, where the the turret opens up and all these gears uh, spin around as you open up the turret. Are you aware of the third party take on this design, Shar? Yes, I am. I was interested in buying it until every review I said it, every every review I saw said it was awful, which is unfortunate. Really? What figure? Uh, I saw Vangelis's one, and his was glowing. Is this about a uh, DX9 Susano or whatever it was called? Yeah, yes. Susano. Susano. What is it? I did not know it was in particular a take on this. But I thought it was just a general MP-ish scale bludgeon design. Well, well no, I mean, it's, he's all, a, it's he's the a... same tank. It's the same general oh. design. Yeah. Um, similar transformation scheme. I w I've been in, I've I'm interested in it, but at the same time, from what I have seen, it's not. An amazing third-party figure because it, it kind of has that early third. It kind of has that early third-party jank, if you know what I mean. Yes, I think I'm pretty sure I understand. If I, if I ever see it for like I don't know less than a hundred quid, maybe I'll pick it up. I feel like it's one of those free P toys you'd buy for like historical significance. But also, there's lots of free P toys like that and kits. Again, for example, like I think. I think the head robots kit for this RTF bludgeon does help a lot with like the the vibes, but at the same time, then you get rid of that like more movie-ish head, so it becomes a more G1-ish uh, kind of bludgeon. So don't know if that's everyone's cup of tea. I will uh, say though, this is if we're considering this an overrated figure, this is like it's still crazy. This figure still like has so much influence as like being like the bludgeon design so i mean yeah i i will say something i am not unhappy about at all is that this figure has effectively influenced every single bludgeon design since yeah no because if he's not going to be a pretender I, i'd be totally cool with him being like this tank that turns into this crazy as hell like yeah there, there's tank. definitely at least a little line of influence between this and the newest legacy bludgeon mm -hmm. I would not mind like it's never it's probably not going to happen like anytime soon. But I would not mind concept edition or legacy now that that new lockdowns apparently quote unquote based on the movie toy right and not animated. Uh, wasn't um wasn't this bludgeon originally based off of a Don Figaro design? Yes. It's it's like a crazy it's like a crazy like series of events that led to this toy and like I don't think we stopped since it's like like one of you guys mentioned. Uh, every further figure. cementing his legacy as the goat of Transformers design. Genuinely, yeah. Don Figura is is the goat of Transformers toy of Transformers character design. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah. Um, uh, do I have anything to add to my thesis? I don't know. I there are things I really like about this toy as like a design nerd and a tank nerd, but like it just. 
it just sort of puts the issues with the figure into sharp contrast. And that's that's the way I put it. I think to add on to like everything that's been said about this figure, I guess I'd call it kind of overrated too, in a sense that like it's not the best figure from ROTF, but I think that just stands to show how like how good ROTF was. How good yeah, how good again, you know, I feel like this is a thing if you ask any 20 something, they'll say this how how like top top of the line ROTF hunt for Decepticons or RTS was for Transformers. Any 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 twenty something with the same very specific uh, combination of interests that those, we have. Those same <laughs> those same free toy lines, man. They 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 made some good toys. What can we say? They really did. But I think it stands to show that even though yeah, he probably is overrated. Like th- that still means he's just a good toy. That happens to be like not as good as a lot of the toys that surround him. I mean, as Rune said, um, overrated is not necessarily for bad toys. Oh. Simply toys that maybe have gotten a bit more of a reputation than they deserve. And I don't know, hopefully like since we're, we're, what, 15th anniversary of RTF, a lot of, like, those other toys get, like, talked about again, because a lot of them do deserve it, from what memory serves. There, there are a couple other things i like to add about Bludgeon. Firstly, um, when TJ Omega often talks about that mold in general, um, he brings up a clash of aesthetics, like, do any of you see that? No, I see it. I, maybe? I mean... I, kind of, I think it... kind. Of, on one hand, it works. But on the other hand, I get it because you're taking a... I think was originally meant for UT design and then filtered it down into a completely different aesthetic. So, like, naturally, it's not going to gel well with, like, most of the characters based on, like, ILM concept art, you know? I mean, I, the, I quite like it. It I, I like I like how it can kind of fit into either a, a movie collection or a chug collection. Yeah. I think he's sufficiently Bayverse. I think the head sells it a lot. <laughs> like yeah. This very this this specific design has the benefit of in concept being of uh, the head being in concept, able to fit into either a chug or a or a or a movie verse design because his head just kind of looks like that. He does just kind of, yeah, Bludgeon does just kind of look like that. That's <laughs> obviously like a, a, good, a great statement. The other thing, the other thing I like to point out, at least about the mold, is that I have experience with it via the Redeco Hunt for the Decepticons Banzai Tron, and uh, that was a TF Nation purchase. And when I picked it up, uh, the sword was uh, well, the sword handle rather was warped because it's made of crappy soft plastic to the point where I had to run it under very, very hot water at the hotel, no less, uh, to get it back in shape. Oh Rune, God. can I can I interest you in one of my patented uh, 3D, printed, 3D printable replacement parts? Um, yeah. maybe, maybe we could talk after the podcast, maybe. <laughs> Let's make a deal. Um, yeah, okay, I think you uh, went back to the main screen because it seemed like you were wanting to move on to the next category, right? Uh, it's more like it just felt like the conversation was dying down. Fair enough. Uh, in which case, let's move on to underrated, the hidden gems of the franchise. You might say there are more to these than meets the eye. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think I'm going first for this one. Yes. Yep. yes. Presenting, yes. presenting Beast Wars Deluxe Class Manterra. I think even in my video on this guy, I said that the more I played with Manterra, the more I grew to appreciate him. He's he's bright and colorful, though not garishly so. It's uh, the Constructor Con Deco with hits of red, basically. Uh, Manterra's Beast Mode isn't super biologically accurate, as the rear two pairs of legs are much shorter than on the real deal, I think. But you can still tell it's a praying man. The grasping legs are the source of his disc launching gimmick, uh, which neatly fold up when not in use. The transformation is nice and involved, although those rear two sets of legs can pop off at times if you're not careful. What did it for me is uh, Manterra's robot mode, which is very characterful. I know I toss that word around a lot, but that Joker-like grin and the slender proportions, combined with the Deco, which you could call toxic, 
He just looks like the sleaziest bastard you've ever seen. Hell, I mean, without the discs installed, it looks like he has scythes for hands. And while I won't say he's Classic's Mirage levels of Articulated, the amount that he has, you know, mainly ball joints, allows for some very expressive posability. He's, he's just so fun. In no, case I... anyone asks... <laughs> In case anyone asks, I currently don't own Beast Wars Second Mantis, who basically replaces uh, the translucent purple with blue. Add that to my TF Nation wish list. I'm, I'm not sure if this guy quite makes my top ten Beast Wars uh, toys list, but nonetheless, this is a Predacon that I can wholeheartedly recommend. Okay, this is something I can talk about since I he was one of the first Beast Wars like. Toy only characters I bought in this giant lot from uh, another collector here and where I, around where I live, right? And he just feels so fresh. I can't imagine what it would have been like in '97. Because '96, it was pretty straightforward. I feel like for beasts and stuff. And then this comes out like the year after. And, like I don't know how you process it, but like in hand, he's just he's so fun. He's like you said, so characterful. Not even in just the expression. It's just the colors pop, the colors pop, action feature pops, like the choice of plastic molding for like making the wings and legs transparent it, sure it's not realistic but like oh my god it's so fun and also like going back to it uh the cheeky grin is like you don't you don't see that anymore you know like it just feels so alive and that's on top of you know having like sure he never appeared in shows or anything but like he has a whole bio you can still make stories with him but that's more about the toy but I don't want to like go out and say that the whole V Source toy line is underrated because like I know I got a lot more love because through the Walmart reissues from a couple of years back, but like it's still a shame people don't seem to dig even deeper into original V Source after the matter because then they're missing out on freaking amazing toys like this. It appears this choice has caused a little controversy in the chat. I mean, or, or, I mean, uh, for <laughs> one thing, I say that. Um, he didn't appear, but of course, uh, Mantis appeared in the cartoon. I don't know how well uh, the slasher smile, we'll call it, suits him. I mean, he's he's a loner. He's a grouch. But when he uh, deals with intruders, he is quite sinister about it. So you could argue either way. Um, what else was I going to say? Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, from the looks of it, the uh, Beast Wars reissue line appears to have uh, fizzled out, oh, which yes. is a shame because which is a shame because I think a lot of people deserve to experience this one instead of fucking retracks. <laughs> to be Retrack. fair, those those reissues honestly kind of sucked. Like the plastic was awful. Yeah, I still don't. I feel like we've they talked really about, cheaped we've out. Talked about Primal before, but it makes me want to seek out an actual original Primal instead. Yeah, I, I might honestly end up replacing my rat trap and iguanas. Man, because they it, feel awful. Even iguanas, really? Yeah, iguanas feels like trash. But How like, do you tell? Huh? Um, I'm pretty sure copyright stamps usually like denote like what's what and whatnot. But I think if there's one thing to take away, for, as someone who collects a lot of or vintage Beast Wars, continues to, I think a, a nice thing to take away is that like it. Hopefully, got more people like myself into original Beast Wars because, like I said, that means they just can learn about crazy guys like Mantera and tur like find out how fun he is. Yeah, I, I have to say, Mantera is probably on my list for this year too. He's good. Uh, he 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 looks amazing. I I'm slowly getting more into Beast Wars. Like I got Transmetals, Air Razor, and Fusor Injector. Um, I have Basic Air Razor on the way. Ooh. Um, maybe I'll just get some random literal who's this um, year. But yeah, no, I think I wouldn't go as far as to say Beast Wars is an underrated toy line. That's a bit of a hyperbolic statement. <laughs> but I feel like it I don't I wouldn't say Dude, it's an accessible it, toy line. It's as easy to get as most other pre-generations toy lines, at least in my eyes. It just feels like more people just aren't interested, and that's a shame because again, it's it's such a wonderful toy line. Would like, you say you that? Want, like, would you say that the Beast Wars sort of nostalgia bubble has maybe popped a little, or at least deflated? No, I'd say I'd say people are still very warm to the idea of getting new toys. 
because you know everyone's still it's been four no, years. No, I was so. I was specifically talking about like the bubble that makes these older toys f like explode in price. I don't like, think it's ha I don't think it's happened yet. I still think like that time is coming around, but in general, still I I'm a big advocate for getting more people to try these figures out because even if they're not like obsessed with the characters themselves, like I can't tell you a lot about. Man tears personality. I don't know what he does on the weekend and whatnot, but like, I can tell you he looks really badass with like all my other Predacons. So, I think that's like kind of a thing to give these guys a shock for to just have more Predacons compliment, you know, your Megatrons and your Infernos and your Waspinators and your Black Rachnias and whatnot, you know? All I have to say about this toy is you too can support a sufferer of no real hand syndrome. <laughs> for only a for only a donation, two credits a day, you can help the these these <clears throat> Cybertronians live out their life like a normal person. I have something fucked up to say. Okay. So you know how uh when Mantis's mate, the female eats the head of the male? Yep. See where it is on his robot mode? Oh damn! All I'm saying. Oh. <laughs> all I'm saying is that he's also giving head when he's getting head. Oh, man. and that's Get my quote for next episode. Here. Go on. <laughs> <laughs> I have no regrets. <laughs> Are you guys Go on, next you? next toy, unless anyone has anything else to say. <laughs> I'm good. I warned y'all. All right, uh, ID Armed, it's you. Not oh, just, there, <laughs> more V-Sword, yay! TM2 Spidor is a toy that I think, once again, every Transformer fan should have. Oh my gosh. He is, I think, the epitome of what made uh, Beast Wars. Beast Wars up to what, like... Pre Prime Legends class, like such a gem of a size class. Not to like diminish like what how fun like old generations legends and current generations core can be, but uh this figure just feels really ahead of its time in like so many ways. For one, it's just look at it. It's so like eye searingly good to look at just because like Does it colors... count if I does it count if I own R I D um uh, slapper? Yes, if if you are a goosher or slapper owner, it, this also applies because he has basically the same qualities. But like the deco, it's so nice, especially in hand. Like you, like all these colors complement each other really well. There's a reason like blue, blue and green are a semi reoccurring colors to in Transformers. And then you add on the fact that like he's got like for a basic class, he's got like two different gimmicks. Basically, he's got the Crazy Trans Metal 2, like, claw limb. Because, you know, TM2, they all have, like, extra limbs they could, like, pop out. Not all of them, but most of them. He's got, like, an actual tongue that can just, like, be slapped onto Ram. his limb or to his lip. And just the robot mode. It's so, to use a, to use a kit word, it's it's very sublime. Is like, that my catchphrase now? I guess. It's a, it's a nice word to use. What can I say? But just, like... He's got like all the articulation you expect from like an art, like a, you know, RTF H HFTD RTS era deluxe, right? Or basic legends, whatever. Or Scout, there we go. I did, but like the chrome, especially like the chrome, I think, I think the eyes are chrome. Yeah, the eyes are chromed out too. Like, and of course, the like insane, like unimaginable amount of detail each and every limb has that's completely separate from each and every other limb. I need to like what what were they on when they made this figure in like the nicest way possible because they were oh licking my. dart frogs. <laughs> and it's just like really it kind of sucks that number one, no one really ever talks about this figure. Of course, again, Beast Wars feels like a toy line that not too many people like hardcore collect unless they grew up with it. And then number two, it just feels like this figure in particular is more unattainable than most other Beast Wars basics. Same thing with Slapper, because Slapper, you either have to buy him in car, robot, uh, car Robots as Goosher, or you have to buy him in the free pack with Night Scream and Gas Gunk, which means, you know, it's going to be harder to part him out from, like, someone selling their stuff. I love that. His name is Goosher. Yeah, me too. Goosher. 
Um, I, 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 I just have one thing to, to say to you after that entire spiel. Yes. It's epitome, not epitome. Oh, man. <laughs> Minor pronunciation <laughs> mistake. Oh. <laughs> Grammatical error. I was wondering what what ID was saying there. Um, <laughs> I okay, so I really love this toy. Um, obviously, I do, Mister RID himself. Um, but uh, one one thing that's a bit weird about this toy that I've noticed is his his like the the platform that his neck sits on, where his head attaches, has way too has way more joints than it needs to to fold away. Have you noticed that? Like it's got like a joint that goes out to the side that doesn't really like do anything. It just you you, you can just fold the head back and it complete and it sits entirely flush. Oh yeah, right. <laughs> the the torso transform again, but like I feel like it kind of adds to like how crazy this figure is. It's how many joints are literally just in the torso? Because the arms are like to transform pretty straightforward, but then you're like, you're just shifting like whole blocks of the torso into like different positions just to get at what is at the end of the day just a big rounded block. I I do I do love the torso transformation. I love how his chest becomes his ass. Oh yeah, and just how like the entire like top of the frog, like look at where look at where the bottom. Of the frog head is compared to the top of it like that's nuts dude like it is it is a very it's it's how do i put it they got the bits of the they got the bits of the frog to make to be like shoulder pads and they did it in a in like the most roundabout way they could for real, but like that's, but again, that's, the, that's the charm of TM2 is it's how screw you, we're just gonna do our own thing. It's like honestly, of of beast of like the beast wars years, my favorite toys were the TM2s, the TM2s, oh. and the TMs. Man, it's a it's a tough call between if we're talking like non show characters, is a tough call between trans metal twos and fuse wars because both do their jobs so well, but. I'd say TM2's went out because, like, you're never going to see that kind of aesthetic in, like, Transformers again. Not because, like, not even because it's, like, what is it? Oh, everything's you want. It's literally just because, like... It's so quintessentially gonna... 90s. Yes. The most we'll get is, like, ups, like repaints, like, on tight from Gen Selects and stuff. Who still doesn't have a figure? I doubt we'll ever get a figure because... I mean, I mean we say that. that. Supposedly, aren't we supposed to be getting a new Skybite? next year. We are getting a new Skybite. Oh my god, please, dude, dude just like Cyber Shark. That'd be the craziest thing ever. To be fair, Skybite's uh, in a bit of a different league than Spit Ore. That's true, but like still, if that means we can get freaking Cyber Shark, that's like, oh, we're back. <laughs> we're so I bad. mean, if we're getting, if we're getting Skybite, then, you know, maybe we get maybe we get Slapper, and then maybe we get Spitter from Slapper. Oh. I'd, I'd probably... Fr- freak out if we got a new freaking like transformers legacy trans i don't know something something subtitle right if like we got a new legacy style spit or that'd be wild oh I, i'd probably just buy it out of principle if yeah. if if they did like a if they did a, a spitter not spitter if they did a a slapper spitter slapper why are your names why are your names verbs um if they did a slapper in mainline i could see spit or being like a buzzworthy repaint or something oh yeah Toss them in a four pack or something. I don't know. But yeah, I think that's all I have to say about Spidor. Everyone listening, including you guys, I just recommend you get Spidor. Please, for me. I'd like to get both Spidors, honestly. Yeah, I still don't have the original Spidor. Actually, I only have the Transmetal. Uh, I'd prefer to get. I prefer get a Diver. You know, from Beast Wars the Second. To go with my Beast Wars the second cast, but uh, uh, TFCon had a booth that was selling Niagara base for like, ugh, like two hundred something. If I had stupid money, I would pay for that, but like, eh, I'll have I'll wait to find them on Mercari or something. But yeah, I do want to experience that original mode too. All right, it looks like Runestone's internet dropped out. Um, so fortunately, um. 
we don't need him to talk for a little bit just yet. Uh, so I guess we can move on. Uh, Shar, you're up. Okay. So for all the talk of uh, ROTF and ROTF Scout class, uh, we have one of my favorite Transformers toys. And um, this one is sort of personal for me, in a way, because um, my, my father was a big motorcycle guy. Um, he was always a... Um, he had his own motorcycles, and he would ride his own motorcycles um, and, you know, and maintain them. And, uh, you know, when this toy came out, I thought this would have been, you know, I always wanted this figure. Um, but I was, I was never able to find it. Um, and then I found it at, uh, I found uh, Brimstone, or Tr Chopsaw, I found Chopsaw at TF Nation. And he is just, he's such a, he's a, he's a really neat little figure, in my opinion. So actually, like my my relationship with Chopsaw, because I actually did formerly used to own him. I think we got off on a bad start because my copy had the most tightest or the tightest shoulders you could ever imagine to the oh, point. Oh, mine did as well. Mine does as well. I don't. Did you ever do anything to fix it? Uh, I'm just very careful with the shoulders. Okay. I hope that's not a problem with the mold, because otherwise the mold's freaking great. Like you said, it's, it's... such a I have Brimstone, and I can assure you his shoulders are fine. Oh, okay. So maybe it is... I hope it's not a Chopsaw thing, because I'm with Char in saying that uh, Chopsaw is the best version of the mold, if we're talking colors, because it's such a... It's, a it's, got that hot rod, it's got that hot rod red, baby. It's It always... I swear it's supposed to be more of like a Beast Machine's Frost, right? Um, I... I th that might be the reference... Um, but, uh, uh, I spoke to Rune about this choice in the, uh, group chat, and he mentioned that this figure is actually a, might actually be a reference to his pick of, uh, Beast Wars Man Terror. Um, I'm not sure if that's entirely Someone true. Someone in the chat mentioned that earlier, too. Yeah, here we are. Yes, yes. The, um, it, it's interesting. At first, this guy feels pretty straightforward for a bike form, but then you see, like, he's got a tire in his chest, man. That's that's not normal. And like the way, it, the way it just works, it's like, oh my gosh, it's so good. I, I mean, mean, it's it's rare in Transformers that you get a bike former pulled off so elegantly. Because no, like, look at look at um look at street. Uh, whatever her name is, the prime, the prime RC mold. The new Look one? at you know, um, what's his name? The motorcycle from Cybertron. Lug nuts. Um, oh, lug nuts and Hightail. Yeah, and like they just they they aren't they they don't pull off being a motorcycle and being a robot so well, and probably part of that is because. Um, you know, Chopsaw works it into the design being a really skinny skeleton guy. Oh, for real, it's really neat. And also, it's funny, that, it's funny that two of my picks today have been skeleton guys, by the way. I mean, it's, <laughs> a, it's an aesthetic that needs to come back more, but like not overdo it, but like just sprinkle it in every once in a while. You know, don't hey, skeleton guy has basically become my persona now, so but also like engine feet, <laughs> his feet or like his lower legs, his calves are engines. I think that's a part of the car. I don't know carts or I don't know motor stuff, but like, plus like the whole like tight front tire halves are like spinning blade. They're like spinning blades. I don't know what they're supposed to be because like you can't. I think they're supposed. Well, they're supposed to be like saw blades in the hands. But then like those little black nubs on his on the bottom of his arms are supposed to be his actual hands, right? They're supposed to be like yeah, they're supposed to be his actual hands, and then the things going around are like saw blades, basically. That's the way I interpret it. It's cool as hell. It's, yeah. Or you can just fold them away because they're on like a hinge and you can just have it, have him have saw blade hands. That <laughs> is, I think, what I did when I first bought the figure and then I realized he has actual hands. <laughs> but, yeah, I, I'm i really feeling like picking this mold up. But, uh, like, you're, you're really making me, like, want to go 
find someone selling specifically chop saw, see if I can fix the shoulder thing and whatnot. But uh, on the underrated part, are you speaking like relative to like the other scouts from this era? Because honestly, on on that assumption, I totally believe you. Because again, yeah, I mean, like, chop saw isn't chop saw isn't really one of those. Like, like a lot of people talk fondly about um, about ROTF scout class, and with like, good reason. But you have like what Sky Stalker, Breacher, Pubcap. Like, I know I'm probably Dirt Boss. I I know is pretty nifty. I haven't messed with. It is so criminal that we didn't get downshift from Hubcap. Are you talking about the that one canceled repaint? Yeah, the hot the, rod. The, yeah, flames. the hot rod. Oh man. Oh man. Yeah, you need a death with a hammer. Holy shit! <laughs> but yeah, we downshift from reveal the shield. Oh, 2010. Okay. Oh man, that would have been such a good redeco. Jeez. Oh so, well. Uh this was also the same wave as body block. Oh my gosh, have you guys? I'm sorry, we're going off topic, but like, you guys have have you guys seen body block? Remind me again what mold that was supposed to be. Uh, I posted in the, on our group chat. Oh, right? oh, he looks like oh the breacher he repaint. Oh my, God. he's Man, mint green. Oh, I love that. It's not fair that this guy's like only had like a couple of canceled, but I think he had a couple of like samples show up. It's crazy, but what yeah. Does this so... remind me of? Does Sorry, it remind you of? No, I don't know. Remind... I'm I'm, I'm racking my or... brain to figure out what this deco reminds me of. Dark of the Moon Roadbuster? That's like my only guess. Oh yeah, I guess that would be it. <clears throat> or the um or the uh bone bone snapper skin from uh Helldivers. Shout out to anyone who plays Helldivers. Not yet, <laughs> maybe one day. But yeah, so like I I guess the mold does not get talked about that much because Chopsaw is a pretty fun mold surrounded by a bunch of god tier molds. I'll I'll keep it real. I, I don't know. I feel like he. I feel like he should be up there. I feel like he deserves to be with those guys because, like, he he has. What what does he not have going for? What what does he have that the others? That, what does he not have that the others don't or do rather? I don't know because like, he's got the same thing as well as like with Breacher and stuff. Where like he's not really solely a movie guy. You could totally just throw him anywhere. I feel like. Oh, and he's like, on my main Decepticon shelf. Man, yeah, no, it's. So I mean, that's like I said. That's that's kind of the thing about skeleton guys is they can go on any. They can go on the G one or they can go on the. They can go on the main shelf, the or they can go on the on the movie shelf because they just kind of look like that. <laughs> like, like they yeah they look like a skeleton yeah that's just what he looks like. I wonder if it's also no white formers are not like super duper common right but like they aren't. I'd say they're like one of the rarer designs. I guess you, I think RTF, the ROTF era of like Scout just had such a giant variety of alt modes that this guy kind of get lost in the toss. Because like another, I think another bike former Knockout, he gets talked about way more than the Chop Saw mold. Yeah, he was a racing motorcycle. Well, at the same time, Knockout came out in wave one. And that this guy true. was a Brimstone, at least was the tail end of the line. And also, Knockout is a bit more, like, standard of a bike. It's more universal appeal, I'd, I'd say, than, like, a chopper kind of bike. Perhaps. But, yeah, like, when, when your toy line gave you, like, a bunch of different cars, trucks, a biplane, a microscope, a, a, a toaster, amongst, like, other things, I guess a chopper bike is less special in the grand scheme of things. <laughs> I mean, maybe it's maybe it's kind of just special to me because, like, uh, my dad didn't didn't work on these exact kind of motorcycles. My dad was more of a BMW guy, but like, like uh, these, the, the the style of it was reminds me a lot of the sort of stuff that he did. Not fair. Like, what were to reveal the shield scouts? So Backfire, brimstone, prankster, hope. Yeah, man, I need I need more of these. I need more RTF scouts. Thank you for reminding me. <laughs> <laughs> all right, uh, shall we move on? Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, my pick for underrated is also a motorcycle transformer of sorts. It is the last night squeaks. Oh, wow. 
Okay, I'm um, interested to hear you justify this. Yeah, thing here. I've never experienced this mold, but there's like a, a, a bit of fascination with messing with this. So party. I got this one as a birthday present uh, for my 18th birthday. And I got to say, his transformation is so incredibly interesting. And his whole play pattern is so incredibly interesting. Like, he has this trailer that you see, and it folds out, and it has like a toolbox and uh that's where you can store his tinier accessories he has extra he has an extra arm as you can see he has an extra gun um they're, they're both made out of rubber um he's surprisingly posable i mean he can turn his head and move his arms how you like but his legs are just wheels but he can roll around nice he's a nice size um the paint leaves a little to be desired but uh, He's just super fun. He's like halfway between an actual toy and a playset, and I really liked. And I really like that. You know what I... this pick reminds me of? Go ahead. It makes me think about how I really, really liked G One Ironhide as a kid. I was gonna say this is this is big G One Ironhide vibes, or like G One Van out. Yeah, wow. yeah, I see where you're coming from with that. I'm gonna I'm gonna have to quickly pull up some pics of the. I need to take a look at like the, what the base mode and stuff looks like real quick. Like, it's just a little platform with a couple guns on on. Like the top becomes a couple little guns. Um, but yeah, there's like a red toolbox in there, and you can stick his extra handlebars in there. Oh my god! No, I'm looking at it now, and I didn't know he could combine with it to like form like a big missile pack backpack. I I don't I don't have any i don't have any uh well, animus towards this toy but i will say i can i i think most of the animus for this toy kind of just is what rubbed off from the animus towards the character in the movie yeah my, my love for this toy just comes <clears throat> from the merits of the toy itself it's super oh, fun absolutely. i i and i, I heard out. no one of note talk about it i mean once again probably because everyone disregarded it as like it's oh, it's just the minion robot. Like, why would I even want that in my collection? And he ended you know? up being the best toy of the line. <laughs> I've heard uh, I've heard like scorn. I hear scorn get talked about the most, honestly, with the TLK toy line in like a in a positive manner because everyone's like, like, oh, scorn's so great. I I don't have scorn, but I I hold squeaks in a higher regard than both Nitro Zeus and Megatron in terms of how fun he is. Wow! Holy crap! Dang. Uh, he, you know, it's a shame. I guess it's a shame movie the best didn't get far enough to do him because I would have loved to see him with better paint. Maybe more accessories because I know our uh, movie the best did a lot of new tooling, actually, surprisingly. I will it's, say the. It's um, really just the paint that drags him down. Yeah, I, I will say that the rust, the supposed rust that I see here, it doesn't read as rust to me. It reads as poop smear. Yeah, that's <laughs> what everyone says. <laughs> Honestly, like a clean deco would be nice. Like I know he's supposed to be all gross and grimy and battle damage, but like I would I would love like a clean version just have as like a regular Autobot. If I bought this toy, I would I would I would just get like a a, a, a towel a, like a little paper towel with some rubbing alcohol in it and just rub off the the poop smear paint. If I really <laughs> yeah. wanted to use some use some oil some oil paints or whatever to re add in the rust and make actually good rust effects. Yeah. You'd probably get pretty far with that too. Also, uh, just on the topic of speak, squeaks really quick. They were really banking on him being like a big thing with with the kid with the kiddos, I guess. Because I think he had way too way more merch than comfortable. He had a. They wanted him to be like the minion of Transformers. The minion, the BB, yeah, BB Eight, because. Force they wanted, yeah, they they wanted, they were going for like a combination of BB-8, Minion, and like <laughs> also kit heads up rooms back, marketable oh. plushy. Diego oh. Dan Quixote, re, re, I don't know how to pronounce the W R Y at the end. Um, he, he says Squeaks might have been peaks in another world. He was peak in this world. <laughs> no, one, no one understood him. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, we are man. starting the we are starting the squeaks revisionism movement now. <laughs> <laughs> no, I might I might have to like scope this figure out, see if I can just strip the strip the grime off 
and then like just have. I mean, he's probably not hard to find. Oh, probably not. <laughs> but yeah, thank thank you for putting me onto this figure kit because now I'm like, I might have, I might just scope him out if I need a squeaks for some reason. He'll Absolutely fantastic. Uh, Rinstone, you haven't missed very much. We just went over Shar's pick, which was uh, Reveal the Shield Chop Saw, and uh, my pick of the last night's Squeaks. If you'd like to say anything about either of those toys. Well, actually, I'd like to say about the three toys that I missed. Uh, Beast Wars Transmetal 2 Spit Or. Oh, yeah, that's, um, that's when you uh, dropped out. My bad. Yeah. <sighs> but anyway... Um, I think he again. He's he has a lot of personality to him, like Manterra. He's a uh, very sleazy, and this one has a hunchback to go with it. Uh, I have this one to the shock of absolutely no one. Um, <laughs> Thank next you. one, uh, Chop. Um, yeah, Chop Saw. I have experience with this mold as Brimstone. Uh, might get this one day, but it's not. Uh, it's not on my. It's not high on my wanted list right now, but. Um, I'm guessing he actually looking at him. He he he's, he too is a a slender guy, isn't he? A very sleazy looking fucker, isn't he? Uh, <laughs> I will never I, actually, get used something, to. Something I want to say about uh, that design is that um, I think it was the inspiration for Manterra's um, Cybertronian form in IDW's first run of Beast Wars comics, and you can see why looking at him. Which um, wait, which which one? Like uh, the the gather the gathering stuff, or like from? I the... believe yeah, I, I believe it was the, it's it's the the gathering and ascending uh, saga basically. Would it, would it have been the other way around? Since I think that was yeah okay, or maybe, or maybe well, I don't know, or, ma or maybe it was just artwork or something. I don't really know. I, yeah, I, you no. know, I probably got it backwards. No, I you're you're. It yeah, it's the other way. The this artwork influenced Brimstone, which you know obviously then became Chop Saw. Also, Do we have a robot mo pick armed? Uh, yeah, I'm really curious to see robot mo pick. Of it. And as Damn. for um, why you're looking that up, as for Squeaks, um, well, I did catch what you were saying about him being the uh, the big, uh, well, the attempted kid appeal character after Bumblebee, but um, I'm not sure it went down so well. <laughs> I don't um, think that movie in general went down well. I, I remember, like, I think this toy does have a lot of play with it, with that whole um, trailer he's got, and the optional um, swappable hands. Yeah, um, he, yeah, you could, in my picture right here, I have both the spare arm and the big-ass gun attached to him, but he also comes with a pair of um, spare handlebars. Uh, they're, faux, they're faux parts, the real ones are right around his neck right there, but you can plug those in as well to match his on-screen appearance. And those store away in the um, in the toolbox in his little uh, trailer. I heard rumors that the uh, <clears throat> cork size class in general is apparently um, dying or it, it's, it's not happening after 2024 or something? I, I doubt it. I, I'm sure like the listings love to come in batches, so I I wouldn't be surprised if we just see them later. On. I, I think it'd be a shame if like bu the budget size class disappears because then that means the cheapest thing is gonna be like twenty to twenty five bucks, which I, I feel like is not the best thing for younger fans or people who want to just collect smaller figures. What's not the best thing for us either? Yeah, no, exactly. like small figures are fun, so like I don't see any reason why they get rid of them, you know. Because if there's any figure that I see, well, any character that I see being done at that size class, it squeaks. Unfortunately, if they did a core class squeaks, I think it would suck. They did make a tiny turbo changer. I actually, I, I, I got a bunch of tiny turbo ch changes for Christmas because my mom got them for me. I opened like four, like five of them. Three of them were squeaks. <laughs> oh my god. You just I'm... have a little army of squeaks. Unironically, I got like three squeaks. The commissars. <laughs> so if anyone's at TF Nation uh, this year and wants a squeaks and wants to trade it for another for another tiny turbo changer, you know, you know I, maybe we can sort out a deal. <laughs> But yeah, I think that's about everything for this uh, category. Underrated. Yes. Yes. So. Next is overhated toys that get a little too much heat, albeit some of the flack 
is warranted. And it looks like Char is up first in this category. Yes. Over. Okay, yeah. so this toy. This toy has goat. a reputation. This toy has a reputation as one of the, the most difficult Transformers to transform of all time. And I don't think it's warranted at all. It's, no, such, a, it's such a bullshit moniker for him. Because yeah, would... once you get it, he's super straightforward. You just need to know where to put the front where to put the front bumper and how to like manipulate it so that it's not clashing with anything. And then it's quite rudimentary. Like it's it's honestly quite close to a classic car former transformation. Yeah. Like his only real problem is that he ends up with a bunch of kibble, like the those back panels. I mean, I I would argue they're not that bad. Um, you can put. I, I have them posed on. Um, I, I I don't have the main sideburn. I have super sideburn, though I would like to get the original at some point. Um, I have them on super sideburn pa posed kind of like a cape. I think yeah, that that's quite that's what I do with my sideburns. It's just not very satisfactory. But... It's not. Yeah, it's not like the. This isn't like a toy that knocked it out of the park. I think. The guy who designed this, this was actually his, like one of his first Transformers made officially for Hasbro slash Takara. Yes. Um, and, you know, it shows, but it's not a bad design by any means. No, oh, no, not by. I didn't know this figure was quote unquote hated. Maybe it's uh, before I got back into collecting thing. But it was it, it, in, the, in the early 2000s discourse, this figure was. One of those figures that would come up when you were talking about, like, um, you know, fiddly figures, hard to transform figures, you know, stuff like that. It had a reputation. You know, on one hand, I kind of get it, but on the other hand, it's like you guys have been saying, it's it's like a thing you learn to like live with and understand the more you. I mean, that's just kind of how all Transformers work. You you learn you learn to just do it as you keep playing more with it, but. I don't think I feel like the hate's a bit, probably a bit much on this figure. Like considering this figure came out only a couple years before Alternators came out, I think it, I don't think it's warranted. Oh yeah, like especially on a smaller scale car, uh, the fact that it works as well enough as it does makes it. I I think a bit, it get it shouldn't get that much hate, especially. Oh my gosh, I wonder. Uh, I feel like you know. Talking about some of them we're going to be seeing eh, relatively soonish, ish, kind of, because Wave Two hasn't even probably revealed. Man, I'm not excited to see the new Legacy one. Oh, at all. it is. Yeah, no, I'm not happy with that at all. Uh, it's weird because like I have cognitive dissonance with Shadow Striker, but I know I'm not gonna like that. I know I'm not gonna like what's his face at all, Sideburn. Especially when Sideburn, the original Sideburn, has such a really nice car mode, in my opinion. It's just got all the shapes. Um, I'm I'm sure someone can tell me what specific car it is. Dodge Viper. Yeah, it's, okay. a, it's a Dodge Viper. The Super Mode even has a Viper logo on it. Really? I didn't know. I thought. Yeah, because had... Dodge sued them. Oh. Uh, they Wait, or what? compelled Hasbro to pay the licensing fee for it. Oh my! <laughs> I did not what? That's. That's better than the Volkswagen. That's better than what Volkswagen. Yeah, did. they they were like, okay, this is this is clearly a Dodge Viper. You're using our designs. You have to pay us. We'll let you still make the toy, but you have to pay us and put our logo on it. I like that. I like. I, I wish more companies did it that way instead of just saying you have to, you have to, you know, stop doing this. No, you yeah. can still do it. They're like, just have like, to give we us like what you're doing. We just, we just, we just deserve a cut. We like we're we're taking we our just cut. Want in on it. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! So, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna have to go look at my figure now and just, like see the Dodge Viper logo. It should be on the front bumper. Um, so, but yeah, this toy out of um, out of out of all three of the um, Autobot brothers, I think, really shows the Beast Wars Neo influence. Oh, going oh, on. absolutely! Like absolutely. this is just straight up a Japanese Beast Wars toy that turns into a car. 
And I, I love I, that. I, I know love exactly it. what you're talking about. I, I, that's my it, exact thought. He this, looks this, like this... he looks like Brake. He looks like Brake if he was a car. I mean, my my thesis about a lot of the car bots from R.I.D. the the original mold car bots. I love the original molds in general from R.I.D. In my opinion, is they are like they are like Beast Wars toys out of time. They're like if you took all of the all of the um, uh, design philosophies that they built up over the course of Beast Wars and then applied them to car bots, that's what R.I.D. was, in my opinion. I mean, to be oh, fair, absolutely. this was like part three of Japanese Beast Wars. We it was just the only part that we imported um, to but the like, West. It's interesting. Like this is how... just straight up Japanese Beast Wars. Like it's all... like a rev it's like a reverse of Beast Wars Second, where all the mat where all the Cybertrons were beasts and all the Destrons were vehicles. In this case, it's the Cybertrons that are vehicles and the Destrons are. Well, I mean, I guess they bring in Black Convoy and. Yeah, but yeah, like, they should, like they should have called, but... if that name was if the name wasn't already taken up, they should have called it Machine Wars. <laughs> but I will say, it, yeah, it's interesting how all three of them, all three of them being the Car Brothers, kind of all have their own vibe. But they all do feel very, very, very evocative of like the, the Japanese Beast Wars design sensibilities, each in their own way, you know. Uh, Prowl probably being the least Beast Wars like, he's very much like an evolved. Yeah, Prowl, Prowl is very symmetrical, uh, and of course, you can obviously bring out comparisons uh, between X Brong and say Long Rack with their very asymmetrical designs uh, or like very one side heavy designs. I mean, I will say of the three, Prowl is my favorite. Same. Yeah. Um. I honestly can't pick a favorite. I love all three of them super much. I love Prowl so much that I own the uh, Universe Botcon uh, Sideswipe and Sunstreaker repaints. I'm going to mug you. Find, I still can't find the Super Mode for a reasonable price, though. I have every other version, except for Inferno. And then I will have the whole set. Or every single version of Prowl. Godspeed, brother. Yeah, no, I think I think the car brothers are are you are you hunting after the clear version too? I didn't know there was a clear version. Uh, yeah, I'm not okay. sure if I should. Um, the, the super modes are actually like I think temporary power ups, and as they turn into super modes, they become like all transparent, and they made toys they of made, that too. They made toys of that. Yeah, I I feel like I I might I'm kind, I kind of want that now. God damn! Let me look up some pictures. Pose it. I I want to get that and pose it inside of um inside of my um R.I.D. Ultra Magnus slash God Magnus. I I think genuinely all three card rubbers. And number one, I, I'd say all three to various extents are overhated. Well, not I don't I literally wouldn't say X Braun actually. X Braun seems pretty pretty universally loved, but like yeah, no, I agree with Cyburn. He's the I most think, charismatic of the three brothers. I think with how cheap they all come by, everyone should give them a shot, in my opinion. Do they come by cheap? Yes, they come by very cheap, like <laughs> really, really cheap. So yeah, wow, look at those decos. Oh my goodness. Yeah, I got I got um, all of my Autobot brothers for like ten bucks over here. Very good condition too. Yeah, I picked them up for like twenty bucks. Also very good condition. Uh, ten bucks, ten bucks each, I should say. So like sixty I total. I got my I got my uh, X Brawn Super Mode very quite cheap, but for as a kid actually, and it was one of my favorite toys. Um. But he was missing the uh, he was missing his most of his weapons, um, all of his weapons. I had to buy them on the aftermarket. Um, Sideburn and Prowl, I think I got for about ten bucks each on eBay. Oh well, one day on Makari probably. <laughs> all right, I um... I don't particularly um, like this one. I mean, I will agree that. Um, the alt mode kicks like 
no matter how much I end up liking the new Cyburn they're putting out, nothing will top that vehicle mode for me. Oh, um, no question. But yeah, I think I think it's just it's just not the most pleasant of figures to transform for me. I mean, it's it's just that the clearance isn't great. But you know, I guess the more you do it, the more you get used to it. I mean, by, also, by no means by no means is it elegant. But my point is, it's not like super hard. The other thing I, I don't know whether you've noticed is that I'm um, I'm surprised that um, copies of this toy have lasted as long as they had. Since, if I'm not mistaken, uh, some of the sockets used for like the, the ball and socket joints are clear plastic. So the I socket think... joints on the back and on the shield and the shoulder plate are um, are clear plastic. Um, but they seem to be kind of robust because they're like quite thick plastic. So I don't know, maybe it evens out. Also, um, they don't really undergo very much stress during typical transformation. And that's why you'll often see Prowl broken because his you have to pull on his doors to get them open. And, and then that, swivel them. And if, the and if you're not careful, you'll pop the doors off and then popping them back on can be risky business. Whereas Sideburn... Nothing unless you're like stupid or a baby, um, you you won't really face that s a similar issue to that. Wish I could say the same, but no, I I I have the prowl problem, unfortunately. Oof. Yeah, I have to get. I'm, I'll get another one. No big deal. I am knocking on wood right here, but I'm happy to have uh, two very pristine prowls that I can. Still be very careful with. And I need a super mode prowl. <laughs> I believe that uh, seems like we've exhausted the sideburn discussion. Uh, I think that brings us to Rune's overhated choice. <clears throat> okay, so my pick is Armada Hotshot with Jolt. And just to get this out of the way, you could argue whether or not TG Omega's plastic addict had a major effect on this toy's reputation. I mean, it's far from it's it's far from the first online review of this set. It's probably not even the most negative, but it is one of the best known, let's face it. And I will concede that compared to other figures in the line, Demolisher, like like I can see that compared to other figures in the line, like Demolisher, Hoist, Tidal Wave, and from what I hear, Unicron too, Hotshot does come up short. The entire upper body is sacrificed for that Axel Zuka gimmick. The head is a fixed piece with no back and an ugly sculpted face. There's no proper shoulder motion other than outwards. The transformation swivels and the biceps are jointed in such a way that the arms look broken when in use. They're also designed that way because the Japanese release of this toy had a light-up gimmick in the forearms, you know, tied to the Star Saber Minicon. You put the sword in the hand, and it lights up because clear plastic. If only he could hold his engine weapon accessory properly. Um, only Hotshot's legs have any decent level of uh, posability. And yet, I can't bring myself to hate this guy. The sports car mode looks nice and solid. Yellow's a bit vibrant, in which case there's the Power Links redeco, which is obviously an homage to G1 Hot Rod. The transformation avoids the bog standard Autobot car conversion. The robot actually captures Armada Hotshot's race car driver aesthetic well with the helmet and adjustable visor, plus the seatbelt details on his torso. Even the gimmicks, like the, the flip out bumper claw blades, and yes, the Axel Zuka itself. They're kind of addictive. Uh, Jolt himself is an adequate minicon who has some fun interactivity with Hotshot, including that flight boost configuration. Shame it took until last year for them to come out with a figure of Jolt with an actual footprint. <laughs> so I, I have to say, uh, Legacy Jolt is a very good minicon. So, yeah, toys of Armada, Armada Hotshot's design have generally been problematic. Universe Hotshot is a backpacky mess, and his jolt can't stand for shit. Even the recent Legacy Evolution Hotshot has crappy legs, though, personally speaking, I think it's the best-looking 
of the trio, at least in robot mode. It's sad when that proposed BotCon 2017 exclusive, you know, the one that was a redeco and retool of Titan's Return Chrome Dome, looks like it could have been the best Armada hotshot we could have gotten. But that's for a ne but that's for another seminar, possibly. Okay, I actually have a way to justify the lack of a turning head. So, mm -hmm. Hotshot here is modeled after a race car driver, right? Um, yeah. Well, race car drivers, uh, nowadays at least, have this device called the Hans device. It stands for head and neck support device, which basically um, tethers and secures the helmet so that in the event of a crash, your neck isn't going everywhere. Um and it'll and it helps prevent like brain and neck injuries and um as a result it heavily restricts their head movement so that they can only turn it so far in either direction so if you really want to you can just say that everything around his shoulders is just a big hans device i like that way of thinking a lot actually oh my god <laughs> That's certainly a stretch, but you know what? I, I'll, I like, I like the race car knowledge. I only, I only, I only came up with that as Rune was talking. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, the thing about this toy is, <clears throat> I've said it before, but like, this toy is from an era when Transformers toys were toys first and foremost and it kind of has like the it has all the attributes that one would expect from that sort of mindset and at the end of the day a lot of kids don't really care if you can if you can put the um you know if you can raise the shoulders all the way forwards um or if you can or if he has like all the articulation points you would expect you know they just think, oh, you know, car, car, yellow guy, you know, um, with 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 big with big axle Zuka, you know, and he has these play features, which to a kid are probably quite fun. Um, that's not to say that um, that's not to say that toys shouldn't have good articulation and shouldn't be held to a high standard. But what I'm saying is, for what it for for the target audience that was imagined for it and for the um era it came from i don't think it's that bad it certainly doesn't it doesn't eh, certainly doesn't set your house on fire <laughs> i don't know i can't really say much about this figure i haven't messed with it personally but i'll give it credit like like you mentioned char he knows it's a toy I mean, because like that's really what Transformers were at the not not really figures, they were toys, you know. And mm -hmm. to that end, all the stuff you can do with Jolt seems to like just put it more in that camp. And I kind of appreciate it for just going whole hog on it, you know. Mm -hmm. So just like going right down the middle or something like that. Like um something I remember from uh from the plastic edit review was I remember he complained about the booster mode with the with the helicopter blade coming off the back. Well, that, well, that's stupid. You know, obviously it's stupid, but like, kids don't care about that. This is cool. Big propeller come off the back, make it go fast. Of course it does. In in like kid logic, of course it does. It's a big <laughs> propeller. Of course it's going to make it go faster. Yeah. Um, I, I think those I think those videos are satirical anyway, and not you know entirely meant to be taken seriously. But you're not exactly wrong, Char either. Oh, what what yeah, if what gonna... if instead of like a speed boost mode, it's more of like an airboat mode, and he can just like go through like the swamp or something? That would be funny. Oh, I see that. I see that. You can make like you can make like a like a an upgrade set where like yeah, you could you could retool this toy into sea spray, and like make it into like a hovercraft by like replacing the wheels with like the the air cushion. Give him, give him another, um, another mini com painted like Gordon Freeman. <laughs> the HEV suit mini com. 
Are we, are we guys ready to hop on to the next pick? Yeah. Oh man! Oh, 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 oh it's me! Oh, it's me! <laughs> okay. Um, okay, go ahead. Uh, keeping on the uh, theme of gimmick toys, uh, I really couldn't pick. Uh, I wanted to talk about Power Core Combiners, and I couldn't pick just one. So I'm just talking about the whole line. But I am probably Power Core Combiners' strongest soldier. <laughs> <laughs> I will defend this line to the death. It's just. It is a it is just a series of toys built around a gimmick and the gimmick is stupid and fun and I just love them. I have the entire first two waves uh so far. I intend on completing the entire line. Uh I forgot, but... does that include United EX? No, but I wouldn't be against that. Okay. Um well... but like it's just full of really fun toys with uh, in some cases, very, very uh, unique alternate modes. Like, we get monster trucks here. We got two monster trucks. We got uh, Mudslinger, who I reviewed and gave a very bad review when I um, it, talked about him the first time. Like, I, my, my opinion on that review does not reflect what I think any, <laughs> anymore whatsoever. Um, and, of course, in the picture, we got Salvage. We got a freaking base. We got a boat. We got um, a Decepticon fire truck. Smolder. Smolder is probably the coolest figure in the entire line. He's a Decepticon fire truck, and he looks amazing. We got. He has a very creepy robot mode, and even creepier combined mode. Um, you got really cool, unique references to the Dinobots and the Constructicons with very interesting drones. Um, you might have. The Sure, the drones kind of suck, but they're cool. Like, like there's so you many might... things about this line that sucks, but at the same time, it's just it's just rule of cool. No, and I okay. love this line. No. Okay, you you want to know my hot take about this toy line? Go ahead. Power core combiners was ba power core combiners, and the power core line as a whole was basically just a continuation of RTF core class, uh, RTF scout class. That's basically what it was. Yeah, yeah. Not even a continuation. It, it was the exact same time. You had so much to choose from. It was crazy. Oh was yeah, like... someone someone in the someone in the chat mentioned Ice Pick. I didn't even. Oh, think bring Ice, ice Pick. pick. He's ice so pick. good. Oh, um, Sledge. Sledge is freaking. Oh man, he's Sledge is great. He's in the picture. I'm surprised you didn't mention him. Heavy Tread, literally, possibly one of the best tank formers of all time. No, well, the heavy literal tread is the only. One heavy... Heavy, heavy Tread's the one everyone is uh, oh, well, that's the good one, you know. The, 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 the only toy that deserves as much hate as it gets is Double Clutch. And Man, that's because that's he's built that's... like shit. That's but everyone one. else is just fantastic. Yeah. So, I can actually toss something in. You know, very thing you we were doing this after TFCon, because I actually uh, got to meet Eric Siebenhaller, the guy who designed most of these, right? Oh, mm -hmm. really? Yeah, and we talked exclusively about Power Core Combiners. Because, like, I wanted to have a more unique talk with him than probably what he usually gets, right? And he, he did divulge a lot. He said that, basically, uh, they had free reign to just design whatever. But, like, of course, they started from, like, a basic team and just built from there. Like, oh, we're doing we're doing Constructicons, we're doing Combaticons, Aerial Bots, Dino Bots, etc., right? And then, oh, we also have, like, all these separate guys who are doing their own thing, right? And just how they like built it around a, a central idea, and then just went ham with it. And that the whole idea was eventually they wanted to do like separate limb box because, like he said, like the design ethos for this line was everyone was training to become a combiner. Eventually, there'd be guys training to become limbs, which, like in theory, sounds really silly. But then that means we we, we could have eventually gotten like transforming limbs to go with the, these other transforming guys, and then. We could have wait. So, like, so the the idea was that they were like trainees. Yeah. Oh my god, that's, that's kind so of, cool. That kind really that kind cool. of recontextualizes the whole fucking line. Oh my god, that's brilliant. It that's really funny. Was. And that that explains why they're using the drones and the mini cons. Oh my god. So we like, got Rescue Bots Acad. We got the concept for Rescue Bots Academy like what ten years <laughs> early. <laughs> so, like, genuinely getting the chance to talk to the guy who designed it as well as, like, you know, like, God knows how many things from, like, 
Armada to Prime. It, it was very nice, and honestly, it affirmed how much I love this line and want it to have more respect, because, like, there was a passion in it, man. Like, and a passion that's, like, actually good or, like, turned out to be something good. It's just, I just don't know why people didn't like it. You know what I mean? Like... You know, you know what my biggest regret from TF Nation was this year. Yeah. So uh, I'm not sure, Rune. I'm not sure if you remember this. K uh, Kapow Toys had like a whole pile of mint in box power core combiners for like thirty bucks each. Um, and I so regret not getting Steam Hammer. I didn't get any of them, but like I wanted to get Steam Hammer. I was like, because mm, it was the second day, and I'd already spent a bunch of um, toy foo. But man, I, I really if if it's still there next if it's still there this year and I actually end up going, I really want to get Steam Hammer if he's there. Yeah, he's an alright he's actually pretty alright, but like I think if I had the drones I would have kept them, but I don't. But that means I can just get EX uh Buildmaster instead one day. God I really want to EX. There is um one fatal flaw that I do think drags this toy line down uh, more than it really deserves, and that is some of the figures are quite fragile and they do tend to break a little easily because i had to cannibalize two sky bursts just to get one in good condition wow um the first one i got i didn't realize that when i bought it that the shoulder was busted it was broken into multiple pieces like the 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 cup of the ball joint like the actual shoulder piece it was broken um so i just held on to that for a few years and uh, just before Christmas, I bought a new one off eBay, and like a day after I got it, I broke the thigh swivel because Ooh. the hips were too um, were too tight. So I just combined the parts into one um, one working copy, and uh, I'll just have to treat that with kid gloves, I guess. Um, so but... um, the 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 thing for me, the uh, I suppose. Um, thing I've noticed about this toy line was that the mini cons were quite fragile. Because I remember I gifted one to a friend when I was a kid. Like I bought, I bought one from a friend when they were still out. And the thing that broke was the mini con. Like the 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 ball joint broke off. I think it was Huffer. Well, yes, I'm not. I'm not. Thick. I'm not very surprised by that. I mean, just look at them. But fortunately, knocking on wood once again, I haven't had any issues with mine. It's just been Skyburst so far. I mean, on one hand, I want this line to get more recognition. On the other hand, I don't want this line to get more recognition so I can get the toys myself and so other people don't buy them. <laughs> good luck Stay getting... Underrated. Um, good, good luck getting some of the late line stuff for pretty cheap, though, because I hear Undertow, Grimstone... Uh, heavy again, Heavy Tread. All heavy right. Tread and heavy Overrun. The everyone wants. And even Overrun go for a pretty penny even today. No, the main one I want is Steam Hammer. Um, and... Maybe the... The, the Combaticorn set as well. Bomb shock. He's Bomb he's all right. He's he's probably the most mid out of this line. Um, he's he's very kibbly, and his transformation's not that fun. But he's he's still cool. The one the one I do own is a crankcase into Menasaur. Yeah, I need to get that one. I'm like I'm, I'm I've lost half the half the limb bots as well, but like I'm sure I have them somewhere. <laughs> This uh, this isn't a line I don't think too much about. I mean, I, I don't exactly disagree with your points on it. Um, I've had experience with a uh, lead foot crankcase with the Destrons and uh, Heavy Tread. And Heavy Tread is my favorite of the three because I think um, the Scout class figure is the most successful in all three of his modes. Um, if I'm not... I mean, my biggest yeah. problem is the auto-transformation of the drones. <laughs> I just think, like, if the if the transformation for the drones was manual, you know, it, it, it would improve the articulation, and it's not like it would take away from the uh, cross compatibility between figures. No. Yeah. Yeah. No. Out of out of all the things that I could change about this line, that would be the one that I would actually in fact, do. In fact, they, if I, they did a 
Uh, oh, go ahead, go ahead, Ro. I think you're going to say. Well, I, I think you you might you might be about to bring up what I was going to bring up the fact that there was a third party company that um, at least one set that I'm aware of was a series of World War II vehicles for heavy tread. Yes. Oh, that wasn't what I was going to bring up. I was going to bring up the I think fans hobby made like armor like made like um manually transforming armor parts that went with like a fallen figure I no think? that was make toys the... that was make look it up make i think it's make toys chaos paladin yeah that i think that was the one yes that is the one um and they i think they also sold the limb parts separately and it, they turn into like one vehicle and they make like very good, just just basic limbs for all of your for all of your power core combiner needs, because they're because they're you know manually transforming limbs. Yeah. Sick. Yeah. No. Um. But yeah, overall, I feel like the hate for this line has kind of subsided a bit, a fair bit, but. Like, I think it's another line where, like, people really need to give it a second chance. And again, I think... After we power, buy all of them first. After, yeah, no, I would love to do a second <laughs> power. But I genuinely think, like, as time goes on, as, like, people, again, like us who grew up with it, also happen to grow up, right? I think it'll probably be talked about more and more in a positive way. And, hey, I wouldn't mind... I would not mind seeing some of these characters show up again, like, Legacy or whatever comes after Legacy or whatever. As, like... Even if they're not combiners per se, just get these designs again would be really nice. Or maybe that I can see it's a weird thing also because like this is a very evergreen line. So I don't know where they'd go. Definitely not studio series. I don't think. I, I don't know. Yeah, I, th I think I've I think I've exhausted um, my love for uh, power core combiners. I would like to hear any more tidbits you'd have at a later time from Eric Stevenaler. Um, that 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 seems like it would make for a really good discussion. I think I think I got through most of what I wanted to say, but man, if I ever see him again, I'd love to actually like sit down and talk a little bit longer about it, just for like. Let's get him on the show. Let's get him on the show. <laughs> just for that like, the, just for like you know archival reasons, I guess to like add to the wiki or like just whatever. Just so that makes know. me really that makes me really depressed that I won't get a chance to talk to the G two guy again at TF Nation. Oh yeah, because right. he sadly passed. Yeah, there's there's someone magical about talking to the designers, even if they think it's like just a job they have. They genuinely have no idea how much like this stuff means to us sometimes. So like, it it was wonderful finally getting to talk to a designer, man. I got one of my Euro G One predators signed by him, which is pretty cool. It's crazy. So ID Armed, you are last up on Overhated. Let's see what All you right. got. All right, here I go. Okay. So, I won't lie. Yeah, this still it's been just about a year, I think, since he's come out, and he still feels like a contentious figure, right? Um, as resident Chug hater, I feel obliged to say this toy is in fact not hated enough. <laughs> <Aww>. <laughs> don't worry, don't I think you'll agree with my underhated thing in in a little bit. Uh but quite frankly, there is implicit bias since animated is what I directly grew up with and bought toys of as it was airing. It wasn't like UT or anything, it was Animated was the one I woke up to watch all the time and stuff, right? So, but I guess I kind of have to say, like, I'm a little baffled when people, like, get viscerally angry about this figure. Because, you know, if there's one thing we get a lot with Chug now is people getting viscerally angry. And, like, yeah, fair enough. But Prowl's the one that confused me. I get it on one hand because, you know, they're changing up the design. But I assume by, like, this time people are like, oh, yeah, this is just perfect. This is, like, it's here. Just doing these designs in a more generations look, right? But I, I thought he, for me personally, I thought he hit the mark, like, perfect as to, like, what he was trying to be, which is, like, a pretty g one version of Anime Prowl. Uh, and I think it worked out better than Bumblebee and Optimus. Like, don't I love Bumblebee and Optimus, personally speaking, right? But those ones definitely skew way more animated than G1. Uh, this skews way more G1 than animated. And I thought this was like the... I still think this and like Skyquake and Dreadwing and like also Thundertron are like the best attempts at that aesthetic. And along with that, he has like an actual... He has actual gimmicks, like literal, like actual working shurikens and stuff. 
Plus, like, he's got a nice, like, he, nothing's really, like, absurdly painted over for, like, the sake of matching parts. I get the motorcycle stuff, right? Like, but honestly, <clears throat> excuse me. I don't know how much better they could have done it, you know? The only thing is, I don't know if, like, there were some extra panels that came out of the, like, sides of the bike that could have helped. But, like, otherwise, I, I feel like this is the best they could have done. So, I'm a little baffled when people get angry at it. Again, it's, it's they're well within their right. But, like, I'm kind of confused. It's definitely nowhere as egregious in my mind as, like, Prime RC or whatnot, you know? But yeah, you... I, I think I think Prowl is fine. Um and it's not like the original toys don't exist anymore, though. Of course, they, they are sort of pricey, but you can still feasibly get them if, you, um, if you're around. just an animated ride-or-die fan. Oh. I mean, <clears throat> I will say, even as the resident shark hater, um, th- this toy doesn't seem that egregious to me. I, like, I, I saw people complaining about the, about the bike mode, and I get it, but at the same time... I've seen worse. Like, I, I just don't think it's. I don't think it's like. I don't think it's worth hating the toy over. I don't yeah. think it's, it's not Again, great. something like I don't know, something like Prime RC, like specifically that version, not like Road Rocket or anything. That I think, I think that deserves scrutiny because, like, oh my gosh, <laughs> Ugh, yeah. you're the weird well, there I are think- some alt mode decisions I I think deserve a lot more abuse than this. Yeah, no, I, I think, I think it's in pertaining to Legacy and like with the whole redesign thing they've done for like most shows after UT, I think there's other figures that it should get way more flack. I get in, in both like execution and what they stand for in terms of like being accurate to the source, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't know, not too much more to say. It's just, I really like this figure and. I get why people don't like it, but I sometimes think it's a bit uh, hyperbolic, at least, again, compared to some other figures from Legacy, again, one of which we'll talk about in a little bit. From my I, um, I don't hate the toy, but I will say, having having experienced the original animated Deluxe Class Prowl, this is an inferior um, version of the character. And a lot of that has to do with the bike mode, because... Um, the transformation is executed in such a way that um, a lot more robot parts are exposed in the motorcycle mode, whereas on the original, it actually um, came off fairly clean in comparison. I specifically uh, point to the way the legs fold up. You can still see you can still see the thighs in bike mode, and those um, shoulder joints are just blatantly there on the sides of the bike, whereas on the original, they flowed better. But that's just me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, I, will, I, I will say I do think this particular mold works a little better as Chromio. <laughs> yeah, no, again, Chromio surprised me with like how much she's grown on me. I'm not buying her for twenty five bucks for, but hey, for like twenty bucks, yeah, probably. Yes, definitely. I love her Siege. color scheme. I love that color scheme. <laughs> Siege. <laughs> 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 Shit, Ooh. even uh, Thrilling 30, Chromio. No, I think Thrilling 30 is fine. It's just Siege is like a blemish, man. Like, especially in a line like Siege that was like shockingly great at the start. And then like, uh, she's just like a really sore spot in the line, you know? Yeah. I, yeah, I, I agree with Rune, by the way. The, the, the bike mode on the original toy is way better. Oh, yeah, no, by, by all means. Like, I'm not going to disagree. I should really probably get around to selling my Prime Wars Fembots. Yeah, strike while the iron. Why did you even bother with them to begin with? Because I was I was a blind consumer with two O's. Okay, I, I know this is off topic real quick, but I saw someone at TFCon, like um at TFCon there are these like room sale boards, right? Like as in like this big pin board, you can post what you have for sale outside of the dealer's room. People can come shop at your like hotel room or come pick them up in like a spot, right? They give you your number and home you know, hotel number, whatnot. Someone was selling the entire thing for $50. Like, all five. All five of the Orphea team, which is crazy. God, I'm not I, saying they're worth more than that, but he could have gotten more than yeah, that. Yeah, no, it's, no I I just, the guy literally said, I'm trying to get rid of these. I just, I remember the chase. I remember the chase that so many people were going out of their way to find these 
these fembots, uh, these fembot limbots to go with the Elite One. And I think to myself, these the the, the mold to, to begin with, I own one of them. I think it's Moonracer, is so not even mid, sub mid, below average, not very good. And you want to get four of them and go out of your way to get four of them. I just I didn't have any trouble. I, In I fact, I got only... one of them at like half off, and it was Moonracer. But Moonracer has a completely frozen thigh swivel, so oh. <laughs> I, I I was given Moonracer as a Christmas present, I think. Um, but I, I yeah, do, they're, they're not good. I have no. I got a lead of one as a present, and then I was just like, okay, I guess I'll just get the other two, see how the combiner is, and then just. If I ever get like a proper release of one, if I ever get a proper release of one figure, I'm just keeping her as arm candy for Optimus Prime. He loves his buff women. <laughs> Hell yeah! So, Prowl, are we are we ready to get like angry now and move to underhated? Ooh. Ooh. Uh, All right. Uh... So the last category is uh, underhated. Basically, kill it. Kill it with fire now. All right. So I'm first up in this uh, in this uh, category, and it is a figure I have reviewed already, oh and I gave it a negative review when I got it. I sold it off like six months later, and I still spit every time I hear its name. It is Transformers Siege Leader Class Galaxy Upgrade Optimus Prime. This thing is a pox. <laughs> On Cybertron updates in Chug, and I will not, not fucking sure stand you, for it. I'm not, not sure if you heard, but I spit. I, I just spat. <laughs> Thank you. I don't, Thank you. I don't remember. It's been a while since I've watched that review, so I guess I need a review. I didn't know you had such a fervent distaste for this figure. That's crazy. This... Well, the fervent distaste was brought about over over the years. when I, My review was a lot more mellow. But I, it was clear I was disappointed by it because it, like, on paper, uh, retooling uh, Siege Ultra Magnus into Galaxy Convoy sounded like it could have worked. And the initial photos looked like it might be okay. And then I got it in hand and the plastic felt like shit. The cannons are completely hollow. The trailer just transforms super... Sorry, I have the hiccups now. Transforms super weird, and I just hate it. Okay. Sorry, I have, I, I have to cure myself of these hiccups. Give me just one second. I guess I'll take some time to keep um, my mind on this. So I don't well, have, okay. I don't really have a distaste for this figure per se. It's just more like, uh, in the face of guys like Override, Metroplex, oh, uh, this new Starscream that looks freaking great. By the way, just saying. Uh, and now the, the rumored hotshot, which apparently is just Cybertron hotshot, just a little smaller, and like apparently like does everything the original does. It's like I'd hate to see this be. Oh, also with the existence of like Armada Optimus, which I know he's not everyone's cup of tea, but like oh that that's just Armada Prime. It kind of blows to just have this be like the, the be all end all Cybertron Optimus Prime. I mean, you know? pardon me. Oof. I doubt it'll be, but like. It is what it if, is at the moment, you know? If I may have the floor, this toy, this toy, so this I don't own this toy. toy. I don't own this toy, but I I, I, I have the uh, Siege Ultra Magnus, but I have Siege Ultra Magnus, and I've seen enough of this toy to know that I don't like it. And it's just, the fact is, if you own the original Cybertron Optimus Prime, you know this toy is an insult to its memory. Especially when it's so hard to get to get Cybertron Optimus Prime these days, because it you know, it's a really well liked toy and it, it was expensive to begin with. I'm and not fucking toy... giving mine up anytime soon. Get, oh, fucking I can take that off my dead fucking body. I have two. Um You lucky son of a bitch. Well, I I, I can I can get into that, but um uh this toy is just it it <laughs> It pisses me off. Okay, I shouldn't get so dramatic. <laughs> this toy, this toy is not a very good Cybertron Optimus Prime. No, this is all. the underhated segment. This is the segment to be dramatic. Be dramatic. Okay, 
Okay, it pisses me off because this figure, because because Cybertron's Prime, Galaxy Convoy Esquire himself deserves better. We deserve better as 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 Unicron trilogy fanboys. We deserve better. We Galaxy Force better. enjoyers. Yes, exactly. I think, honestly, this figure wouldn't have as, I don't. I think this figure wouldn't have as contentious of a reputation if like it skewed more in the world of like homage instead of just. I know that's what it is at the end of the day, an homage. But again, like I genuinely, I could see myself waking up tomorrow from like a, a nice eight hours of sleep. I open my phone. I go on TFW. And it's like new leaks discovered, and then it's like Cybertron Universe Optimus Prime Leader Class PR. For like next year, and it like that's it. <laughs> <laughs> My heart will like actually sink. I will be in a slump all day just because of it and whatnot. It was it's terrifying to think about, but like that feels like it could happen. The, honestly, what it, it's also just a bad toy because it doesn't fix any of Magnus's issues, and it just adds like fifteen million more on top of it. Like um. You can probably see it in my old review from 2019. Um, the 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 truck mode doesn't even sit on the ground flush. The way that the things um, attach to each other, the back end is like lifted like 20 degrees off the ground. I'm I'm exaggerating, but it's very noticeable. And like, you know, he has sculpted fake wheels on his wings. I would honestly have preferred if they just got rid of the the, the fake wheels and yeah, just no, made them I, wings. Or like just literally like throw a dab of like black paint or something, please. Like it's not hard. It's not a hard black paint. <laughs> if I can say one one nice thing about this toy, the head sculpt's all right. Yeah, yeah the head it's sculpt just is again fantastic. It's got no like I won't lie. This is even something I can rant about, right? It's got no black paint. On the ears, so yeah. like it just feels so bland. And another thing that I do enjoy about it is that the guns have handles this time, and they are adjustable. So, very oh, very yeah. small silver lining, very thin. I guess. Also, Everything... I think it's obviously it's here's the thing: it's still a hard bolt to get. Like Galaxy Upgrade goes for a fair chunk of change, and I don't so... understand why. I don't know why either, honestly, but like thing is is like uh it's obviously a lot easier to get repaints from this mold than the original. So I'll give it that. I think um I think I might know the answer to this question already, but um how do you lot <laughs> feel about this version of the mold being redone as a Nova Prime? Oh that I think it works better as like the Magnus retool. Or I know it's more about the Guap retool, but still I, I think that one works. You know, because there's enough different that you can, like, disassociate it from being a Cybertron Optimus retool. I will say the way the wings are molded, it looks very awkward in truck mode. That I is kind of ignored Nova Prime entirely. Yeah, yeah. it's already on well, no, I, I mean, I've, I bought him, but I think a lot of people did, not gonna lie, and now it's weird because he's, like, pretty hard to get now, surprisingly. He's, like... He goes for a fair chunk of change on the aftermarket as well now, which is really weird. I, I'm I'm not an IDW fan, so I don't even care about the character or anything. Hey, I'm like not that. either, but like, shoot, man, if the toy looks cool, I'm gonna pick it up. That's kind of my rule of thumb with Transformers stuff that I haven't invested in. Yeah. But uh, eh, if I was to get another Prime, I'd probably get the Make Toys one. I don't see. It's just like at the end of the day. Also, like, I don't think Guap or I don't know if Cybertron Optimus needs a new toy, but he's gonna get a new toy one day. I mean, I feel like he doesn't need a new toy, but he would probably benefit from a new toy because yeah, it's, the original is the original is, is hard to find it's, and it's I think it's a design that people deserve to experience. It's and there are a few limitations of the original toy that I think a new version could benefit from. Like those hip ratchets are really weak. I'd like a I, I'd at least like a new version that can stand well. Yeah, hip ratchets. Um, uh, the arms can't go out very far. Ha just better hands in general, I think he would benefit from. I think his hands are fine. Oh, not, not hands, wrist swivels, Ron. Oh, yes. I hear that one third party version was fucking hell. <sighs> oh, it's yeah. I, 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 really, so, so I was really excited funny. for that as well. 
I would like for it to get like a better quality reissue one day. I think it might have, but like I don't know. Ships sailed for like the hype back there. Yeah. Which is unfortunate so... because I would like more third party uh Unicorn trilogy stuff to exist. Wasn't Make Toys supposed to make one before they imploded or whatever? I mean, they were doing. They did Galaxy and Meteor, so. Mm. At any rate, I think I've exhausted my uh, vitriol for this figure. Next up is Shar with another convoy <laughs> of sorts. Okay. Ooh. I am going. To I am going to take on the persona of uh, Doctor Egg of Doctor Eggman from the Sonic the Hedgehog cartoons for a moment. I hate, hate, hate this mold. And you know why? I yeah, fair this? enough. <laughs> I can't take that away from you at all. <laughs> you know why I hate this mold? Why do you hate this mold? Because I love, I love Laser Prime, and like uh, Monsieur Gusto said. I love Laser Prime, and if I don't love Laser Prime, I don't chew. <laughs> that was that was that was Anton Ego. So, Anton Ego, rather, you're 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 very correct. So personally, I'm sorry, I watched Ratatouille a month ago. <laughs> <laughs> so, Legacy Laser Optimus. I don't dislike the figure. I don't like. I don't hate you it. Just, I think you I'm just very mean with me. I'm, I'm very ambivalent. <laughs> I'm like, really, I'm really ambivalent about the figure, but I also am angry because, like, I, I know they could have made a brand new, not a brand. They could have made a brand new figure. That's what I'm trying to say. Like, I agree. The I don't. I, 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 I thoroughly enjoy Earthrise Optimus, but like, you're telling me your first new leader for a brand new trilogy is just a retool. You know, like, I, I feel like that's a very weak showing, right? Huh? You know? huh? No. All of my problems come from this toy. All my problems with this toy come from the fact that for some reason, someone at Hasbro decided that this toy should be an Earthrise Optimus Prime retool. And it's like you took the most simple, most elegant, most wonderful toy design that you had ever been graced with, and you completely destroyed the appeal by overcomplicating it, by changing the, the the very simple, very fun transformation that it originally had and making it just a mess of panels. And don't... And it's, don't even get me started on the Scourge repaint. No, yeah, I love the Scourge please. repaint because I'm a Scourge guy. I really like Scourge. I really like his design. And I don't... I don't... I, I don't hate Scourge for not being... for being inaccurate... Because it, it's not about being accurate. It's the fact that they lost everything that differentiated Scourge from Nemesis Prime. It just became a regular Nemesis Prime deco rather than Scourge. And that's what really frustrated with me. With that, that is what really frustrated me about that toy. Especially since you have to pay a markup because it's a Velostron collection figure. And they couldn't even put tampographs on the shoulders and on the, win on, on the chest windows. Um... Just everything about this toy frustrates me. No, everything. Like, so you're right. It it feels overcomplicated for the sake of adding steps to the box, right? Because honestly, like imagine they like I think the transformation is neat, right? But at the same time, if they went for the standard, pull the arms out, swing them down, boom! Like you got the big shoulder blocks in the arms, you just flip the fists out and whatnot, you know, right? Then number one, shoulder articulation would have been like encumbered, right? Number two, you could still have like the cool shoulder pops because like I think it's cool they added like shoulder missiles to to like this design. And then three, you could have like taken that engineering that you removed by simplifying the figure and then putting it into the trailer so the trailer could have a bunch of the knickknacks the original has that the new one doesn't, you know? I think mm -hmm. they could have also specced into greater articulation, like give him an ab crunch, give him like um double jointed elbows give, give him an arcing back even like just give him all sorts of bells and whistles instead of a, a transformation that didn't need to be more complex than it is An another thing uh the id brought up about the shoulder pads that, that really pissed me off is that the shoulder pads don't move the arms 
that's part of the appeal of the original toy is that these big shoulder pads move with the arms. That's that's what that's part of what makes it cool. It's like it they 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 screwed this up with this toy and they screwed it up with Armada Megatron. Yeah, Both that's what I was great. gonna bring up. I was gonna be coy about it. I was gonna be like, oh, imagine thought, if they did this for Armada Megatron too. I thought that was like the the big thing you're gonna get into because that's like the problem everyone has with this mold. Even if they dig it like I do, it's just the, the shoulders don't move. <laughs> And you, oh, know, and you know, the, the, from what I understand, um, the, the real kicker about the lack of shoulder articulation is that on the original, from the reviews and pictures I've seen, that has wiring in the shoulders, which you would think would restrict movement, but it doesn't. It does. The wiring does go through the shoulder to, to go to a light bulb in the hand or an LED in the hand, which lights up the sword. Which is crazy. Yeah, not only the shoulder, but the elbow. You know what's funny, by the way, about that? Um, so I have my Black Convoy, uh, our Car Robots Black Convoy Scourge. I have the Japanese version, um, the one with the uh, electronics removed. You know what's funny about that toy? Yeah, it still has the wires in the arms. <laughs> <laughs> but... um, and I checked, there are no contact points inside the cab to put batteries in, unfortunately. So there is no um, light up gimmick. Damn. Yeah. Very sad. So you know what's something? Um... Something I have to say about this figure that uh, a lot of people I don't think have brought up is this figure feels oddly. I, I hate to use this word. I'm, no, I don't. I use this word not lightly. This figure feels kind of gentrified. Gentrified. <laughs> okay. Because by ba by basically like by removing the sick ass like <laughs> deco on the trailer, you're like removing one of the most G two things about this figure. And, oh, I get it. And then you compare it to like the G axis that comes a wave after, and it's like, oh yeah, that's that's G two. Like, holy crap! They gentrified my G two. They put a Starbucks <laughs> up here. I, I think for the, part, <laughs> I think for the most part, they've gotten a lot better about like again having things from the source material pop up. You know, like it's just a shame this guy doesn't have his sick details, and you have to go buy the toy X. I like buying stuff from toy X is cool. But for someone like this with its trailer, you're right, IDR. Buying toy hacks is cool, especially if you use my promo code on my community tab. We love it. We love a good show. We, we love, love to see it. We love to see it. Show. Get 15% off your next order if you use lights out before the end of uh, March. All caps. <laughs> lights out, one word. Buy the stickers. But yeah, no. What a, what a shame. I, I hope again it. Gets another redo, but we we'll probably we probably won't see it till like the twenty thirties at minimum. Um, quick question: uh, Has anyone here experienced the reveal of the shield deluxe? Yes, Brian. Yes. It's on my wish list. I I like it. I like it. I think I do enjoy it. I like it because it's not trying to be the original. It's doing its own thing. It's it's, it's sort of movie esque trick. in a way. It is. It is. It's got some neat tricks as well. Like having the having the front having the um, the cab become the actual chest chest windows, while still maintaining the front of the truck becoming the becoming the shoulders. That's neat. Granted, the figure has some uh, odd some funny tolerances, but um, and the 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 side windows being being opaque while the front windows being clear is a bit um, off putting. But I, I like it actually. Also, I've heard it described as a racing truck, um, <laughs> which I, I don't know. Maybe that's a thing. It is a thing, but it doesn't look like one. I saw I saw some truck racing on TV, and uh, the racing trucks are very different. Yeah, it looks more like a streamliner truck than anything yeah. else. I think we've answered enough about this figure. Are we ready to move on? What do you guys feel? <laughs> yes, um, you're up next, I oh. armed, and we're sticking with Legacy. Uh. <laughs> I am actually kind of surprised that you picked this one because I knew it was very much ridiculed when he was revealed for good reason. Are you surprised yeah. to hear are you surprised to hear this sentiment come from me then? <laughs> A little bit, because like he did get a yeah. lot of flack, and I just want to know why you, of all people, think he deserves even more. 
I just I mean I agree with you, but you know Yeah, it's it's just weird coming from you. <laughs> I just don't like what it stands for, man. Like I know that, that's such a I know that's kind of a silly thing to say about a toy line for like ages eight and up, but like I just mean in terms of like how much Hasbro can get out of us. Cause here's the thing, right? The sentiment has come up again since Sandstorm, people are starting to get them in hand, right? Since retailers are getting them early. Where like they're trying to tell us that, like, they can't do this stuff at Voyager class, right? So they put them in leader class, and then they throw a bunch of knickknacks in there, right? I'd begrudgingly accept it, if not for the fact that, like, five years ago we got Siege Springer. And on one hand, I get it with Siege Springer. He's a pretty simple guy, but still, he has a pretty heavy parts count. There are a lot of moving parts on him, and then he comes with five freaking accessories that are way more that are way more manageable and usable than whatever Blitzwing here comes with. <clears throat> and on top of that, he looks like the alt modes he has. Blitzwing here has the tank chode, and then he has, like, a tank stapled to the bottom of a jet with, like, literal missing jet parts for the sake of cartoon accuracy. And, like, cartoon accuracy is fun and all. There's a reason I still like Grimlock standing upright instead of standing, like, a modern interpretation of a T-Rex. But, like, this is just, like, too far. It feels too... I don't want to say cynical, but, like, it feels cynical in an odd way. Like, I – and I hate to say it. I was and still kind of am excited to get Sandstorm now at sale price. I won't lie. But, like, Sandstorm genuinely seems kind of like a repeat of this, except a lot less egregious. But, like, the I The difference like, is that Sandstorm looks like an actually good toy, but you're yeah, still getting ripped off. Exactly. Yeah. Like, I'm not one to be like, oh, the size matters. I, I blew 85 bucks on New Age David, right? Right. I feel like I feel like New Age David is more justifiable because one, it's third party. They do things at small scale, so it's it's no, you know I like how, you know how they need to they need to charge more per figure. I guess. And also, it has a way higher parts count. It's just more like seeing a sandstorm that's like shorter than something like Legacy Tarn. It's like that kind of ugh. You know what I mean? And now we're gonna get a Springer that's gonna be like that too as a leader in Studio Series at the end of the year. And it's like, well, I can't see why they keep doing it. Like, I know why they keep doing it. It's just like, they did see Springer like five years, man. Like, And they reissued him like two years ago. Yeah, and they reissued him for Legacy as like a really good Voyager. Like, you know? I, 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 can I, I, can I, <clears throat> can I say something? Ludicrous. Yeah, as, shoot. As, the res, as, as a plane nerd. I fucking hate the jet mode. Yeah, no, fair enough. You are well in your I don't jet. think you need to be a plane nerd to hate that. No, no, I, I hate it, it for specific reasons because I because the MiG thirty one the MiG thirty one Foxbat is actually a really interesting aircraft that has very funny uh, historical significance, and they butchered it. I would and they they they. they no, they aren't. They aren't Hulk hands, uh, Bio Dragon. They are Garnet fists. If anyone is familiar with Steven Universe, they look like they look like the Garnet's gold, yeah. gold and fists. I don't know. So it's weird though, because like I don't give Astro Train this kind of crap at all, right? I you mentioned... genuinely, I find Astro Train to be pretty great actually, especially Galaxy Shuttle. But that's because like he comes with a bunch of stuff that's again pretty useful. He comes with like a cool tender that can like hold five guns, can become a whole base. Can form like a, like a whole wing pack and shoes and stuff. Like it's practical. These are hands that I don't. I don't think any of you guys own Blitzwing. He can't use them for credit. Oh, I I'm do. so sorry. You own them. He. It was it was a crap. gift, and I made damn sure they got it for Voyager price. <laughs> I don't know. And I think the why this the other reason why this doesn't sit me personally, aside from like the ethics of selling something like this as a leader, is I I, I know that's like such a out of pocket statement, right? Is I own LG Blitzwing. I paid 25 bucks for my LG Blitzwing, just missing big fight the shuffler repaint, right? And like I, LG Blitzwing, LG Blitzwing is great. Yeah, no, it's like like sure he's a headmaster, but honestly, I could care less about a figure being a headmaster as long as you're fun. And he's fun. He transforms from like each mode until in like five steps, and he's so colorful and saturated while this one's like gross and when and those, and, the, and each of those modes are so different from each other. Yeah, it's so like I don't know what happened with this figure at all, man. And it's like I know we're making better strides with leader class. Like, uh, who did we just get? Who? What leader class just came out? I'm blanking. 
Tiger Hawk's actually pretty nice. He's pretty nice. TM2 Megatron was pretty great. I actually like Skyquake and Dreadwing a fair bit. But I now like, we're doing we're doing Still freaking waiting for the refame. We're we're doing like Sandstorm, and again, I don't think Sandstorm's as bad, but like, still, like, I don't know, man. I yeah, don't. I'm know. getting really, really fed up with these um, size class plus th bullshit things. Yeah, no. I and mean, we we started the slippery slope with Cliff Jumper. We did. That's true, we but did. at least like, at least Cliff Jumper like was very like art well articulated, pretty great car mode, you know, like. Like a great spread of weapons. Blitzwing. Like at least, like that makes sense. But like Blitzwing is a shitty plane, a shitty tank, <coughs> on a really bad deco, crap weapons. Like I, I don't, I don't know. What they I were don't get why they did the tank showed. I don't like, understand it, it. it. Again, it feels really cynical in a way. I don't, like you know. Sure, but, I have something unrelated to say, but um. Earlier, we had our record highest view viewership of the podcast. We had 12 uh, viewers in the audience. Oh, yeah. And then you mentioned Steven Universe, and we lost a fourth of that. Ah, like, oh. Instantly. Three of them left. <laughs> <laughs> I would like to apologize to everyone in the chat for mentioning Steven Universe. You did it again! Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> I'll... St I'd like to apologize. I'd like to um, state for the record, uh, I don't know. Uh, I, I will not mention that show ever again on this podcast. I promise. Um, I'll, 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 um, I'll take it off your mind. I'll say that, uh, um, yeah, the uh, the budget that went into those gauntlets or whatever the hell those are supposed to be probably could have gone into the engineering of the main figure. Just saying. Yeah. Oh, like one hundred percent. Also, how did Hasbro think this was acceptable? Yeah. I'm, what I'm, were they thinking? <laughs> I'm, this also, is like one of. The, yeah. Go on. This is just like one of the times where I'm like, again, this I'm the Chugmeister or whatever everyone calls me, right? This is the one time I'm like, why are you, like, absolutely, like, because like the other thing is, on, until we get overcharged, this is like the only time this mold's been used. Like, I mean, duh, it's split swing. You we can't already like, got overcharged. He was leader priced. Uh, oh man, that's the uh, like. Here's the worst part. I am lightly tempted to get overcharged, but I'm not paying fifty five bucks. For it. I no. do no. I do no. <laughs> Don't play overcharged. Twenty bucks. No. Yeah, maybe twenty bucks. We'll see. We'll. See. I mean, again, you can get Blitzwing on Pulse for like thirty dollars, so I expect overcharge to go for less. We'll see. Depends on how well prominent the wave is at like stores and whatnot. But I, 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 I'm kind of sick of talking to this figure, so if you. If room would like Walter you, White in the back of the car screaming at ID, watching him <laughs> walk into a Walmart. I, I, I posted that same gif in the chat when um, ID <laughs> said epitome earlier. <laughs> uh. <laughs> also, you know what they are? They, they, um, Alex Tech brings up a good point. They are, they are just... They are the energon. They are the energon hand weapons, but they have no combiner to go with. Yeah, they're specifically the hands from Bruticus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <sighs> Runestone, I think we interrupted you very rudely. I'm not sure you got all of your. No, I, you've out. already. Because ID already brought up a uh, overcharge, the uh, Diaclone Blitzwing redeco. I hope at the very least that comes with some sort of Quintesson accessory to differentiate it further. I genuinely think the figure would be better if it didn't come with. Didn't come. With yeah, it'll be seventy bucks. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine it's a two pack with the Earthrise Judge. Oh. I mean, at least then you can get a Judge because that's like an expensive <clears throat> thing to want because it's like a nice display piece. Like at least. Ugh. At any rate, we have one more figure to talk about, and it, before we go on to audience questions, and it is Rune's underhated figure. Oh man, I, I want to know Rune. I'm really interested. Let's see. Okay, so uh, change the slide, please. Oh, oh, okay, yeah, that's, that's nice. okay. Studio Series <laughs> Crankcase. 
I need I need the lore on why you hate this because yeah. I don't. Um, Rune is well, you can call it you can call it pedantic, but hear me out, because this was another category that I had multiple picks for. Two other other candidates include uh, Revenge of the Fallen, Blaze Master, and Voyager class Megatron from the two thousand and seven movie toy line. But as, as far as I know, they got the reputation they deserve, and I'll admit those two are debatably worse than Crankcase here. That's no, uh, Blaze Master's quirky. Blaze that Master's being said, quirky. that being said, Common Hasbro L does not even begin to describe this as there was such on. as as there was such an obvious route they could have gone and they didn't if you don't know um to those watching if you don't know crankcase is one of a trio of decepticons alongside crowbar and hatchet called the dreads they appear in transformers Dark of the Moon, in what I believe is one of the most popular fight sequences across the Michael Bay films. And all of them transform into the Chevrolet Suburban, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. Whereas in the actual, whereas in the actual Dark of the Moon toy line, only Crankcase uh, got a full-sized figure, though all three were part of that miniature Cyberverse play pattern where Crowbar and Hatchet had different alt modes. Uh Anyway, one of the earliest uh, Studio Series figures was Crowbar, number three. Crankcase is uh, number 30. We're finally getting Hatchet, three years after his picture surfaced. Crankcase uh, here is a redeco, uh, a straight redeco of Crowbar. And there's your problem, right there! <laughs> so... <laughs> so, let's ignore that Crowbar is already a frustrating mold for reasons I'll discuss in a bit. If you've seen the character models for him and uh, Crankcase, you'll know they sport different head and chest designs. Crankcase also has those powering pincers. For Studio Series, they just change some of the plastic colors and paint apps, including those spiked we weapon accessories, and called it a day. Which for alt mode I can understand, but for robot mode, less so. And do you know the really stupid thing? Crowbar is actually an extensive remold of the last night's Berserker, who, if you haven't seen him, looks an awful lot like Crankcase. And word of mouth is that the retooling done for Crowbar meant they couldn't just slap Berserker's head back onto that version of the mold. It's almost like they recolored the wrong bloody figure. Seriously, like... If, if they had redecoed Berserker, it would have worked so much better. Like, and, and they still could have retooled other parts if they felt like it. But when it comes to accuracy, the head is usually the first thing people notice. And it, it's not like Berserker's differently sculpted claws and feet work against Crankcase's bestial aesthetic to begin with. And you might say, oh, you're getting worked up over cosmetics, blah, blah, blah. But had they gone the route of making Crankcase a recolor of Berserker, it would avoid the one major problem I have with Crowbar. Those fucking dreadlocks. They're, they are very <laughs> gross. They are very gross to look at. I'll agree they are that. <laughs> some of the most problematic parts I've dealt with on a Transformers toy. They're, they're rubberized, not with a wire running through so you can pose them. It's the kind where you leave them in a set position for too long and they eventually oh stick that way unless you uh. run them under really hot water. The robot to vehicle transformation is fucking obnoxious since you're trying to hold onto them all while simultaneously moving robot parts around. When you're done, assuming it actually holds together, you're left with a trail of hair dangling underneath. If you kit bash tiny cans on the end, he'd be a fucking wedding car. Just... <laughs> 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 I will say I will say that in a vacuum without that context Crankcase isn't really any better or worse than Crowbar as an action as an action figure sorry but knowing what they could have done just makes this feel like a complete and utter waste of a release 
they, they, they completely phoned this one in. And that's why Studio Series Crankcase <laughs> is my pick for underhated. You know what? Yeah, fair enough. Um, I'll say this before I have to head out. Yeah, just a heads up. I'll, everyone, I'll be headed out in like a minute. So I'll say my piece on Crankcase. I'm not like... I think you will all three you know I'm not much of an SS collector, right? I kind mm -hmm. of skew more towards like regular chug. And if I collect movie stuff, it's older stuff. But like stuff like this is such a weird, like, what's the word? Like it's such a weird sore on like studio series. The studio series, I think, has had a pretty good track record of like either having like unique molds for everyone, or if it if something is a repaint, especially back in the older days, with like Shadow Raider and KSI Century, they're based on like real life car decos that like the manufacturers picked out and has those like okay we'll do that right but, like this really weirds me out man like because it's it's just crowbar but like in colors that definitely don't look like crankcase runestone really saw that uh runestone saw plastic addicts lying in a gutter and placed <laughs> it on his own head yeah, also, I gotta say, Rune, I didn't know you were this passionate about Studio Series. Or, like, I guess Studio Series dreads. Yeah, this is, this is like, new information I'm learning about you right now. <laughs> all I can say is, all I can say is, go off, King. Go off, King. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I feel like that was a well-deserved event. <laughs> Louder for the people in the back. Honestly, um, Crowbar was um, one of the very few Studio Series figures I've sold on uh, just because uh, Crankcase turned out like this and uh, it, it didn't seem like we were ever going to get a hatchet. But I might end up getting a Berserker and I might buy a Crowbar once again and end up taking the dreads off. Like I, I took the dreads off my Dark of the Moon uh, crankcase as well because just to make him transform better so i might do that for crowbar as well because the actual toy is all right once you get past those fucking dreads once you fucking cut them out like a tumor have any of you guys heard of the uh, song dreadlock holiday by a 10 cc can't say i have yeah, well, these dreadlocks need a fucking permanent vacation. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, let's give ID Armed a chance to give some parting thoughts before he has to go. Uh... Yeah, I just got to, I have a, I have like an IRO thing to take care of, or not to take care of, but to go do with friends. So, yeah, so, yeah. Prank case kind of sucks. I, I've known that because I have a friend, a friend of mine who's like very passionate about Bay and the studio series that talks about it all the time. And I'm like, yeah, no, I get it. But now that Rune's talking about it, I'm like, oh yeah, I really get it. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, final thoughts before I go. This was great, actually. Uh, getting to talk about figures that I think deserve more love and deserve to be like sent in a fire straight to hell while already on fire, you know? <laughs> I, I would... Honestly, I feel like obviously we're talking about the group chat, but I'd love to do like a second episode of this at some point, or like maybe with like different things. Like I don't know what else, but like I think it'd be, I think it'd be fun to do again for sure. I, I have been, I have certainly enjoyed um, going on my rant. Oh, absolutely! But it's been a it's been a good three hours. It was great talking to you all, and also getting to hear what chat had to say. Uh, thanks, chat, for being very. Uh, thanks, chat, for being very. Uh, what is it? active today it's been nice seeing like what all you guys have to think about the the crazy picks we've made but yeah um i'm gonna go ahead and pop out now i'll talk to you all later and i'll see you guys next month for episode eight yeah have a good trip i will bye well we're not done quite yet we have uh one more segment in this uh very very long episode uh, we have a couple viewer questions to go through, just four. Um, our first one comes from DN Prime 17 What toy did you buy fully, fully expecting to hate it, but ended up feeling they're overhated or underrated? I can't say I've ever bought a toy expecting to hate it. Um... Anyone else? I have a controversial pick. 
No. Point blank. I expected to dislike him. Turned out I kind of like him. I think he's neat. Even after he's been fucking ass raped by the budget. He's been grimace shaked. But um yeah, he's Point Blank is uh, he he will always live under the shadow of what he could have been. But I think he's neat. I like his car mode. His robot styling is pretty cool. He kind of reminds me of the more scuffed Unicron trilogy stuff, except without as fun gimmicks. But um, yeah, I think he I think he's all right. I, I like him a lot more than fucking Crankcase. So that's for goddamn sure. <laughs> Legacy crankcase, not studio series crankcase. Man, crankcase has a bad fucking rap in, in at Hasbro. Someone at Hasbro must hate crankcase to give him the worst toys. The the crankcase curse. Yeah. Rune, what about you? Uh, don't you mean crank curse? Uh. <laughs> um, I don't know. Um, I'm too exhausted to begin with, but. Uh, um, I don't have an answer to this question. All right. Uh, next one coming from Next Mix. For the figures you've discussed in this stream, are there any noteworthy reasons for the figures to be as it, incorrectly valued as they are? I think we kind of already covered that just by talking about them. Um, I will say, I think part of the reason why, um, why sideburn got such the ba such a bad rap probably comes from the fact that <clears throat> compared that he he was a lot less elegant compared to his two companions yeah I think out the of the three he's definitely st sticks out yeah I, i'd say that's probably led to, to a large um portion of his uh reputation yes Otherwise, I guess we'll be moving on to the third question from Seb. Do you think the Earthrise toys deserved all the praise they got when they first came out with figures like Prime and Cliff Jump <laughs> Cliff Jumper being hailed as micro masterpieces? Um, Hot take. Plant. Earthrise Red. Prime was never good. Ooh. Earthrise Prime was always mid. He was always mid. He was inferior in every conceivable way from Siege Optimus Prime. Um, and I got the Netflix one after the hype had died down. And uh, I regret it. I don't think it's a very good toy at all. I, I, I think it just, it's just, oh, it's G1 Optimus Prime, but not quite. Oh, great. You know, I, I, I have no love for that toy. I'm struggling to think of a single Earthrise toy that I think could even scratch the moniker of Micro Masterpiece. Earthrise was in very, very broad strokes, very mid line. Will Jack was all right. He was all right, but he, he was probably the best figure in the line, but still just all right. Sunstreaker was all right, wasn't he? Oh, I forgot about Sunstreaker. I I still don't own a Sunstreaker. Um, Sunstreaker is one I have wanted for a while, though. Just because I like the way his feet transform, I think it's neat the the trick they pull there. Yes, I I would I would rank I still though I would only rank Sunstreaker marginally better than Wheeljack, but still quite good. Above, they're both above mid. I think. Um, yeah, I mean, as far as Starscream is concerned, it's it, 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 um, it was basically just the Seeker mold, but again, but bigger this time. Yeah. Uh, the only the only uh, figure of Earthrise that I have that I think is in any way stellar is Skylinks, but even he has some quite 
egregious issues. Like he doesn't even hold together <clears throat> in Skylinks mode. <clears throat> I mean, uh, Sky Skylinks, I think, kind of. Skylinks kind of skates by on a lot of his novelty as well. Yeah. I mean, you could say when you're going to get another Skylinks, but we just got Combiner Wars Skylinks beforehand, so. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> I say just got. It was a few years, but, you know. Just in um, chug terms. Yeah. Rune, what about you? Me? I'm surprised that Cliff Jumper is even considered a micro masterpiece. <laughs> but um, I bought, um, I mean, I bought the Shattered Glass Optimus Prime from Selects because um, just f just for a little more variation since I had the Classics Voyager. Um, let's see. Uh, I and yeah, I'm not even sure the Earthrise toys, relatively speaking, received all that much praise from the start. I remember a lot of people were very. Uh, a lot of people did did very heavily sing the praises of Earthrise Prime. I think the uh, Dai Li have gotten to Bio Dragon eight eight two because he is saying there is no Skylinks in Combiner Wars. Yes, there is. Was it Prime Wars? Oh, sorry, was it like Power of the <laughs> Primes? Am I, being, am I the only mistaken? am I the only one here who watched Avatar: The Last Airbender? No, I know that, what you're talking that... about. I know the reference. Ooh. Yeah. No, you you were correct. Um, he's just denying it. Oh, oh, I get you. I guess we'll move on to our final question from Alec Tech. Is there a toy where your opinion of them being over slash underrated has changed as time moved on? <laughs> well, um, I already mentioned Power Core Combiner's Mudslinger earlier, but um, for sake of um variety i'll talk about siege spinister maybe i remember he was people were singing his praises from high heaven uh when he came out and i just didn't see it and um my review of him really reflected my contrarianness uh regarding him so it, it was it was a lot more negative than i really felt i was just more annoyed by how uh how everyone was treating him i mean i like the toy i like the trick that he pulls with the legs um i will say it does lead to him having a second auxiliary cockpit in helicopter mode that really doesn't have, make any sense to be there but I, it's neat how they got that to make the legs look very clean in robot mode yeah i was a lot more mellow when i ended up reviewing uh rotor storm I'm trying to think that hmm, what is a toy whose opinion I have really changed over time? It's weird because I could probably if you if you if you if there's probably toys in my collection that I can think of where my opinion has changed, and if you brought them up, I could be able, I would be able to tell you about them. But when I try and think of them off the top of my head, I'm drawing a blank. <laughs> <clears throat> All right, I guess we'll come back to you, Rune. What do you uh, do? You do you have any ideas? Um, I think for this question, I'm actually going to go the opposite direction and pick one for underhated because um, at the time I did my review of it, um, I was fairly mellow towards 2007 <coughs> Voyager class movie Megatron. Uh, since then, I will forever state that it has been one of the worst um, toys that I have reviewed on my channel. Really? Yeah. Why so negative? Well, have you have you seen that jet mode for starters? Yeah, I suppose, but the movie design was quite abstract to begin with. I don't know. It's just, it's just a piece of crap. Like, and also, like, th they did this really stupid design choice where. Um, instead of having like ice, pa like ice patches sculpted on top of the wings, it looks like his entire wings are made of ice. Oh yes, that is yeah, that is quite a silly decision. He had to go with the whole frozen and ice has. It, it looks like he's made of ice rather than he's covered in ice. He's also um, got that really obnoxious um, spring foot gimmick. 
I really hate. I just don't like it when they do that. I don't um, like the the piece of ice on his chest. I can never get it to go down. It's always covering his face. But yeah, I got nothing else. All right. Uh, in that case, I guess that's a wrap on oh, today. Oh, I, oh, I do have one figure whose opinion I have significantly changed. Um, the power. The original ROTF, um, ROTF Devastator, I have significantly softened on as I've gotten old. The Supreme Class? The Supreme Class. I used to really hate it. I used to think, oh, it's a fucking baby toy. Oh, no robot modes. And, you know, all of these things stand. All of these criticisms remain. But on the other hand, it's just kind of funny looking. <laughs> funny guy. It probably, it probably wasn't worth the money I paid for it when I was a kid, but, like, it's funny. I think it was $100 when it came out. It was... It wasn't worth a hundred. It's barely worth fifty, but like, it's. I don't hate it. I used to just hate how much space it took up, despite me not really liking it. But like, eh, it's it's just a goblin. It's just a goblin that lives in my house. <laughs> All right. Um, I guess that's a wrap on this episode. Um, once again, this has been really fun. Um, I yeah. had a great time. It was really nice defending some very controversial opinions. Um, we should really do this again sometime. Yeah, I I enjoyed taking on the personality of um, of uh, Sonic Adventures Doctor Robotnik. <laughs> maybe maybe uh, one episode we should just do a controversial opinion where <laughs> we can do anything from toys to fiction to anything in between. Sure. That sounds that sounds fun. So, um, join us next month as we talk about. Well, we don't really have a subject picked out yet, but um, we'll all or most most of us will be here. I think Runestone, you'll be taking a leave of absence next month, so it'll just be me, Char, and um, and ID Armed. In which case, we'll probably be talking about the Skybound comics run. In which case, I need to catch up ASAP. Yes, you do. May may I may I close us out of this uh, podcast? By all means, go ahead. Okay, so take care and uh, till all are one from Kit, ID, Double E, and myself. Fuck <laughs> uh, Studio Series Crankcase. Fuck my internet connection. Fuck that image of praying mantises that Kit put in my head. And to, quote, <laughs> and to quote Ironhide from that fight scene in Dark of the Moon, class dismissed. 